All right, welcome back to two pools, two quarterfinals. We will have White Wolf Palace, Mr. Yo and Licks versus ACCM and Say My Name. We will have Team Islands and Team Acropolis for White Wolf Palace and ACCM and Say My Name. We'll be having uh, Cape of Storms and Regicide Fortress as their home maps. Berbers, Vikings, Persians, Lithuanians, Franks will be the pool one of WWP and it will be Chinese, Britons, Khmer, Huns and Portuguese for uh, our Vietnamese team. Other side is Turks, Burmese, uh, Bulgarians, Slavs, Vietnamese versus Burgundians, Celts, Goths, Magyars and a surprising Italian pick. That is definitely surprising when your opponent has team islands because this would allow the Vietnamese team to go Portuguese Italians on team islands which is not necessarily ideal and it looks like Vietnam takes over the gamer legion tendency of banning Sicilians. Apparently people hate Sicilians so much in 2v2s that they just ban the Civ itself. So I'll be joined uh, with Nili for uh, this set as well. Nili and Jordan lost to ACCM and say my name in the decider sets. WWP nearly um, ended up second place in their group, but they edged out a victory against uh, Souls 3-2 victory in uh, the winner's game, and that meant that uh, White Wolf Palace won their group. Whereas for uh, Vietnam Legends, they got second place in Group A behind Game of Legion A, Viper and Taro, after winning in the decider set versus Nilia and Jordan. Before we go very, very deep into our discussions with Nilly, however... Let's uh, take a look at uh, the introductions of uh, these teams over here. The tight-knit group known as Vietnam Legends has played together for the better part of a decade. While Bax will be returning this time with his new team, Infinity Legends, ACCM and Say My Name return to two pools under the Vietnamese banner. Having played together for such a long time, the Vietnamese pros have excellent coordination and synergy. They know how to work together to become greater than the sum of their individual strengths. ACCM was one of the most improved players of 2020 and will most likely be the carry position, while Say My Name brings his long experience and reliable gameplay to the table. Vietnam Legends play the meta and they will play it well. In the first two pools, Vietnam Legends lost a tense five game set to Doubt and Slam. They're an extremely solid team that on a good day can beat any other duo. However, they'll need to bring their A game if they want to make a deep run in the tournament. So that is Vietnam Legends for us. And uh, our second team, White Wolf Palace, one of the candidates to win the entire tournament. Mr. Yo and Licks, the winners of uh, 2v2 World Cup, they will take a fight here. With uh, potentially the better chance of winning this set, but before we evaluate their options, let's take a look at uh, their introduction here. Licks and Mr. Yo were the winners of the 2020 2v2 World Cup. And in today's competitive landscape, there is perhaps no scarier team to face. They take their opponents out of their comfort zone, prevent them from taking the initiative, and force the enemy to play the game they want to play. Mr. Yo is considered one of the greatest players of all times. His style, a mixture of relentless aggression, superb map awareness, and late game macro, has earned him success in both 1v1 and team games. His teammate, Lix, is known for his exceptional ability to create chaos behind enemy lines, thus nullifying their initial game plan. This forces a reaction and enables Mr. Yo to develop unbothered and use his advantage to seal out the victory. Both Mr. Yo and Lix took part in the first two pools, but played in different teams. Invited as one team this time, they will be relying on their strategies, tactics, and the team synergy they've built after 10 years of playing together. Lix and Mr. Yo are a team that no one wants to face, and they will be one to watch for in the tournament. And with that, let's join up with Nilly, who is going to be co-casting this set with me. Ayo! 
Hey, old Ludacore. Hello there. So, Ludacore, is the ocean sea level everywhere the same around the globe? Yes. I heard no, and I'm trying to Google it. Uh, that's a good question. Is the ocean level same everywhere? I don't talk about tides. I'm not talking about weather. I, I once heard that there's either a gravity or magnetic field that... That somehow created a, 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 a crater kind of in the ocean that is not really visible by for the eye. I'm yeah. Yeah, I, I think it depends on what map you look at. On Cape of Storms, it's definitely <laughs> not even. <laughs> uh, uh, I will look into this. Hmm. Google only gives us some very, very long explanations that I'm not willing to read right now. Yeah. Alright, how are you doing, by the way? Because I guess we got to have some small talk here before we get into casting. Um, I'm very mixed. Uh, I was um, very hyped this morning. And then I was listening to one of or my favorite improvisational rapper who's coming up with the lines um, uh, from his head. And he had a very emotional guy that had a heart loss. And he was rapping about that and both were crying and I was crying. And yeah, so that, that was that was weird. And like three minutes later, I started my stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, back to casting now. I uh, haven't cast in quite some time. And it, it feels good to be back in some form. Yeah, I'm fairly certain that a lot of people are happy to have you back in... Well, I am as well. It's nice to have you here with me. So, how do you feel about the draft overall? Uh, let me look at it. What do you think about that? So, uh, we have... Team Island, Team Acropolis. Makes lots of sense. Vinay Home Maps, Cape of Storms, and Regicide Fortress. I think they... Lost to GLA on Cape of Storms. Couldn't play it against GLC. So I think there's a strategy coming up there. And some improvements. And when it comes to civilizations. Aren't I going to see Khmer that early? Mm, yeah, that's and interesting. Where, where do we want to see Khmer? It has to be Team Acropolis then. Maybe Regicide Fortress could be something. Ah, that's Chinese. You have to go. Chinese are the best Regicide Fortress. Tiff. Yeah, I don't disagree. It's just, as you said, Khmer is probably best used for either Team Acropolis. Maybe Cape of Storms could be something, but... I think they have Huns for Cape of Storms. They have Portuguese for Team Islands. Maybe Arabia, honestly. Arabia is probably Britain's. Right. You do have Magyars to match it up with, so it makes sense. And they don't really have great archers if in their second pool. They have gods, they have Burgundians. So, indeed, Britons might be better off if they go Arabian, then they can go Burgundians or Magyars with it. The thing is, VNA now gets Italians in their second pool, something I think I've not seen before. If Team Islands was around. So they don't have to play Portuguese on Team Islands, right? They can switch around. So they could have another Archer Civ if they wanted to. 
or maybe have it as the front sieve even on Cape of Storms. Yeah, that could make quite a lot of sense for them. Especially oh, if they're planning to land immediately. And I think that against you and Lix, you can afford to have only one of those, like Portuguese or Italians on Team Islands, because you know Lix is going to land, so you can have like a second sieve that's just like a landing sieve or landing defense sieve. Hmm. Ah, huh, well, I, I'm, I'm interested to see what they have in store for us. And when is the official start? Um, whenever you're ready. I'm in game number one, so... Okay. I'm at 16 seconds and paused, so whenever you're ready, we're good to go. We have Arabia, and uh, you were right about Britons here. It's going to be Burgundians and Britons versus Franks and Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. And that's the same combo... VNA played against us as GLC, right? No, it wasn't. They had Mayans, but still, Britons is considered to be equally strong. Or, yeah, at least a pretty good contest um, contest there. <clears> hmm. <throat> Let me. I obviously was thinking so much about um, water levels that I didn't prepare anything when it came to. Uh, overlays here. It's still two pools, it's still quarterfinals, and we see all that. I'm happy, I'm happy, I think. We're connecting to the game, and then you can do professional caster intro, I believe. Uh, all right, that's that's one way to start things. According to Twitch chat, and we know Twitch chat is always right, sea level is about 20 centimeter higher on the Pacific side than the Atlantic side, due to the water being less dense on average on the Pacific side and due to the prevailing weather and ocean conditions. Hmm. Okay, I, I thought it was something higher than that. So... Like, the, the difference was more than 20 centimeters. At least that's what I thought. But yeah, let's do a professional intro for the the game as well. All right. So are you ready? Yep, yep. All right, let's do a countdown then with three, two, one, and co. So I guess welcome everybody to two pools to the second quarterfinals with WWP White Wolf Palace. Yo in blue as Franks, green is gonna be Vietnamese for Licks, right side is uh, Burgundians for ACC, I'm in red, and say my name while playing Yellow Britons on the southeastern side. With me is Nilly, who will probably give us a very, very good insight to the matchup of these sieves. First of all, we have to sync again. What time are you into the game? Uh, 110. 110, okay. Well, then I can talk a bit about the inside. Obviously, Britons and Vietnamese, the archer players, Franks and Burgundians, the cavalry civilizations. Franks, very early pick there, as well as Britons. So those are kind of the carry sifts. But so far, we have seen Burgundians performing pretty well as the backup civilization. Absolutely. In fact, I'm very pleasantly surprised on how good Burgundians were in many cases in this tournament like the cavaliers seem to be working really well overall yeah well maybe let's see if they can become even better same name known for his laming is trying to go aggressively with his scout shouldn't really find too much and well seems like a pretty standard start let's talk a bit about wwp we did see Yo and Lux win the 2v2 World Cup and have seen Lux play with some wild, wild civilization. This format should be even better for him. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, I think Lux is probably the biggest beneficiary of every player from just having to play unconventional Civ matchups because for what Lux is doing, he can do it with any civilization, basically. Mm hmm. Yeah, and then you can always give Yo the strong civilization, the carry civilization. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're looking strong on those settings. Vinay 
well, pretty solid. Um, felt like they were outclassed by GLA, but defending their second seat in their group. How do you like that chance in this one while well, we see ACM? Well, could be quite annoying to Lurks Villager. Yeah, it could be. That house is going to be delayed. It's like 96% and Lix had to stop making that, so it's obviously very annoying. So what was your original question? Uh, how would you predict the series? Mm, probably 3-1 for WWP. Okay, okay. Yeah, feels like a very reasonable result. Uh, I think we have not seen too much from VNA yet, simply because the first series of the against GL C didn't really matter. Then they had GLA, so probably your hiding strategy is there because most likely you're losing anyways. And then they just ruffle stomp 3 0 yesterday. So I think we might see some ideas that they didn't show yet. Yeah, I think so as well because. Especially after their win against you, they knew exactly that they have to save their strategies for the single elimination stage. And as you said, maybe they knew it against GLA as well, that Viper and Tato is probably the clear favorite to win their group and they should be aspiring for the second place instead. Mm -hmm. Ah, well, and that's indeed what they got to do. Give me a quick update on the time, maybe? Um, 6.50. Oh, perfect! And we will see a Drush from Same Name, a player that loves to play Drush Fast Castle. Seems like a very reasonable map for that one. Has a massive wood line at the bot uh, at the bottom. Very safe gold. He has to be happy with his map. Yeah, he has to be. The berries are not necessarily perfect, but he has a very very nice map. And I think that could be very decent for a Drush FC even, although he didn't push in any of his deer just yet. Yeah, but still, he will make the Drush FC happen, right? But Britain, something you can do quite easily. He's going for the big walls, collects 10 more gold. Should be indeed what he is aiming for. While well, we see Yo already going for the second Lumber Camp. Scouts should be fine for him. But how can he defend against the Drush? Have to be some small walls. He has to, indeed. And eventually, he's going to have to clean up those militias as well. So he might need to fight those with scouts, which is not necessarily ideal. Other side, uh, we have a Barax coming in here for Lex. His gold mine is not so great, especially considering that he's not really rolling that much. And uh, ACCM will be up at 21 pop, but he's got double Barax already. Hmm. That, that comes in handy. Okay. Farm upgrade delayed. Obviously, you don't need that one before you start farming, which should happen in like 60 food, though. Only two on berries. This is interesting. He won't have that much food. Indeed. And it's more about the fact that uh, he's going to have to add farms a lot faster because he will be running out of sheep just now. Did he get lamed or something? Luke still has four sheep at home. Uh, maybe one sheep got sent over there. Now the stable being dropped and the drush didn't do a lot. Mr. Yo walling everything. Exactly what we expect from him. Indeed. ACCM is going to play safely here with all the walls. Same thing for Say My Name. WWP is walling way less, but for now, Yo is safe with the quick walls against the drush. Yeah, but it's not a pretty wall there in the long run. Because once crossbows are out on the field, those villagers will be extremely exposed. Indeed. I like the decision from Say My Name to just walk out with the Vils for the hunt. Obviously, it would have been better to push it in, but he needs the scout more for the Drush. Yeah, I think even if we have four Ostrich there... Didn't he have four? It felt like it. Maybe milling that could have been an option. Uh, also a good option if you don't wall out your deer while milling that area. Indeed. We got a scout from ACCM inside the base of Licks, but that's just a 1 HP one, so he won't be killing more Vils. Yeah, feels very reasonable. Double Archer range by Lux. Can delay Fletching quite a bit as well. All players really walled. Look at that! ACM even walling behind his gate. That's something we don't see too often. He is aware how vulnerable that area could be. Yeah, especially because that's a diagonal gate, so that's going to make it even harder to defend that. It's better to be safe than so, especially with Lix coming for with two archers and the spearman quite early on. 
Okay, but can't find too much. Mr. Yo deleting his small walls, going for the bigger ones is aware that the archer slash crossbow threat could be around the corner at any point. And yeah, just feels very reasonable here from all players. Not a lot of killing going on yet. It looks like ACCM went for a very greedy play here, by the way. Like, he's already at 13 farms and he just started adding scouts. He's on two scouts right now. And one of those is the starting scout. So, it seems like he went for a very, very eco-heavy approach here to start the game with. Well, did go for both eco upgrades. Mr. Yo, both as well, but only had to research one himself. Mm, that's a lot of scouts now. Six scouts out. Blacksmith being built, but cancelled. I think ACM has to reward with the market. Pressure. Yeah, yeah this is going to be Thra. That's a very, very long wall to hold. And it seems like he is... He has the vote for a market, but this is getting more and more dangerous for him. Ooh, and he's just stalling there. He will wait for like 10 HP, then build the market that the two villagers are prepared. Yo and Lux think they can do something, but market on time. Just toying with them. Yeah, and oh, it's a beautiful one as well from him, intercepting the archers of Lix here. That's great value. Oh yeah, in the center, nice moves for sure. And well... Lux not being protected there, not a single spearman, could be a big difference, but obviously you don't want to add any unnecessary spearmen at that point. And, well, second market. Ah, slowly but surely it's getting costly. Yeah, it's going to be expensive. This is why Saracens are so good here, because you can just place 10 markets behind. It is also worth pointing out that ACCM already got Boso, so his eco is very, very strong here, but if they get into his base, he's in trouble. Ooh, isn't that interesting? Okay, so he is playing the very greedy approach. Do you and think... Archon? Yeah, go ahead. Do you think it's overly greedy to have one player going for so much eco for with Burgundians and the other Drush of Seeing? Well, if they can hold the walls, uh, I will allow it. And they're not giving up too much map control, right? Third market being placed down. The big question is, is Say My Name now sending the archers back to give... Is he having some breathing room, or is he trying to attack and do some damage against Yo? I think he should attack Yo, especially with ACM once again intercepting the archers of Lix. Oh, that's so good again. No upgrades on the scouts, though, so they will have some losses. What? Disengaging? I think you could have committed there. Yeah, probably. Maybe he's waiting for the blacksmith to go up and then tries to get scareboarding. But indeed, trading off five scouts to like four or five archers would have been pretty good for him overall. And he was already there. I think that should have been the better choice. Nice huh. quick was from Mr. Yo, who is getting pushed by the crossbows. And uh, this should be very hard for Say My Name to get through those wars. Uh, it's still open between the house and the market, I believe. The other house was not started. And Mr. Yo having enough protection there at the bottom. Now exiting the top a bit more. Feels like Mr. Yo is buying himself enough time. Only 20 seconds away from Castle Age. Indeed. And uh, what's more concerning for a Vietnamese team is that ACCM still hasn't clicked up. So his eco is great. But being that much behind in the Castle Age hurts really badly. Well, his eco will be solid after that, right? You can get to Cavaliers earlier, so he can catch up. They are Maybe in... a triple market play from him. They are That's inside ACCM's table. base, though. Oh, oh, mistakes were made. Oh, this is so costly. Yeah, this is looking very rough because those scouts have plus one, plus one as well. And there's absolutely nothing that ACCM has here to defend. And Frank scouts, villagers there, archers a bit out of position. How many villager kills can we see? None for now? What? Um, there was three before, so... Uh, now the question is, do you sit under the tower? I think that could make sense. Yeah, it could. Especially because ACCM is trying to get gold so he can get knights out when he reaches Castle Age. And he's at 84 gold, so that's one knight that he can make without plus two defense. He has a market, so some chance of selling some resources. But this is so ugly, and that might be more dead villagers here. Let's see how many he loses. Five in total already. Make it six. Make it seven. 
Yeah, that is looking very, very rough for ACCM. Oh, his eco lead is basically gone. Meanwhile, Mr. Yo got enough knights out for the defense there. Lovely play. He just had an easier task making the defense happen. Seminem trying to microwave, but against Frank Knight with plus two already. Those crosses stand no chance. Yeah, indeed. And that is looking really rough for the Vietnamese team because they will clean up the archers of Licks, but we have seen this so many times. It doesn't matter what you do to Licks if Yo is just able to boom and get to cavalry. Mm -hmm. And then somehow Lux still has 35 villagers and makes 6 archery ranges produce crossbow and still kind of destroys your base. Exactly, especially with Vietnamese archers that will have more HP as well. Say my name will hold his base for now, but I feel like at this point ACM even had to go for light cap upgrade because he doesn't have gold for night production. Oh man, and now the Siege Workshop, still no gold, can't even afford a Scorpion. Yeah, that is looking really rough and there is still 20 crossbows for Lix that will be pushing his base and say my name will be kind of forced to stay at home so he can't help. Oh man, remember guys, sending some resources there is the way to go if you are playing your casual game with your friends. But in this tournament, sending resources only allowed if you reach Imperial Age. Indeed, it is. And now the crossbows are inside ACCM's base again with ballistics and even thumbring. Ooh, okay. So really wants to do the damage and, well, he, he won't mind that, right? No... Knights on the field, only one Mangnol now. I think if the Mangnol goes down, so are the hopes of ACM of ever really controlling the gold. Exactly. And there is plus two Knights. They can run past the TC and maybe snipe that Mangnol. Yo is going to commit and the Mangnol goes down. And ACCM is going to lose five, six, seven villagers on this food line again. Oh, got you. And yeah, that's really ugly. He has to run around and finding so many kills. Ballistics now coming in for say my name, but just simply too late. Villagers, this is completely in shambles. Just compare villager counts. Yeah, that is a massacre. Especially the big deal is that behind this one, Yo is also booming very heavily. And this is how the game, like, even if ACM survives somehow, Yo will just snowball the game at some point. Only had two TCs though, so not the craziest boom, but yeah, certainly we know that those two TCs of Mr. Yo will always work, and say my name. Well, he simply will lack some power units then, right? Crossbow, Arbalest, maybe a thing, but we won't even get to that stage. We won't. GGG says ACCM, and uh, I guess our question was answered. It was a little too great to go for. A full boom from ACCM and also a Thrush FC from our yellow player. Well, if, say, my name is sending his crossbows over, can he not clear up the army? Uh, he should be able to. Hmm. Maybe that was the decision that cost them. Uh, it's not easy. The wall was really big as well, though. Yeah, it's a big wall. I feel like the big deal was that if ACCM tells his teammate when Say My Name reaches Castle Age that he needs help, Say My Name sends the crossbows there. But I think ACCM told his teammate, I'm good, I have double layer policides with houses behind, just go and attack Mr. Yo. But it appears that ACCM didn't expect those units to get through his walls, and by the time he noticed it was too late. Fields being a man and well, they still have two home maps to work for themselves and hopefully some strategies prepared. This one is going for WWP. Let's take a look at the statistics together. All right. So. I think the KD for Mr. Yo 18 to 8 is telling a lot about this game. Yeah, well, he could just clear up crossbow, right? He could wait till he had 120 HP, 4 armor, knights, and he never got onto the craziest numbers. Sam and actually was sitting at 28, but ACM, as you can see, 6 army high. That was his scouts there, ending the game with 0 military. Aye, aye, aye. Even, even <laughs> the early Bozo won't compensate for that. Exactly, especially if you look at the overall ecos. Everybody had pretty much the same eco with the exception of ACCM, who just got forced off from gold so much. It's only 420 gold 
collected in the entire game. Yeah, not pretty at all. And Villager High, 39 for ACCM. Just suffering so much. And as you can see in the timeline, Yellow's Army started a bit late. Red never really got onto it, while Green and Blue were just developing quite nicely, especially Mr. Lux. Exactly. Lux's uh, build-up of archers was very nice, and he was able to finish off the game with the fast tumbling and crossbows. And uh, Yo and Lux, very, very dominant. Game number one from them. But, well, we have the home map now, or at least one home map coming up for V and A. And what would you want to see? They have the choice between Registered Fortress and Cave of Storms. Uh, it's it's hard. I felt like against Souls, WWP felt a little weaker on Regicide Fortress. They ended up winning, but I feel like, especially since you died to an early aggression here on this map, I would love to see Regicide Fortress, you know, that slower game at the beginning and just go for a late game approach and it, it actually helps i think cool your mindset a little bit so it's not like you have to jump back into like a very open map like cape of storms with laming with uh, early scouts hitting your vultures it's more like you have some time to settle your mindset in the beginning of the regicide fortress game mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah uh, i i like the thought process i would also if i were their coach recommend them to go for Red Set Fortress and play a bit of a different game, shake it off more easily that way. All right, I'm paused at 10 seconds, so... I did exactly the same. All right, so let's do a countdown then with 3, 2, 1, and go. I think and that's not what I said, but okay. Yeah, um, I'm still connected to the game by a capture oh. age, but I'll try to... Um... All right. I did pause at 19 for you, so... Okay, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Perfect. It's absolutely perfect. All right, uh, will you introduce the themes for us? Uh, I can do that. We have WWP, uh, the champions of the 2v2 World Cup. Player playing with Lux and Mr. Yo having Yo playing Persians, going for the Cavalry Civilizations with a big boom approach. And then we have Lux, the crazy player, the master of putting you in awkward situations with Burmese. And they're facing VNA with a way lower seed, but a very solid performance in their group stage. We have Say My Name, a player that some people don't really have on their radar when it comes to the top 15, but... Yeah, simply showing great team and performances now for, I would say, like 15 years and playing together ACCM with the Celts. Someone who are, is, I would say, one of the most improved players over the last year, I would say. Absolutely. This is always an interesting topic. I cannot help but feel that the players that start streaming their POV consistently start to improve very heavily. Like, we could see that with Hera. And I know one exception. <laughs> uh feels nilly man but you never know it takes some time so well yeah but ACM uh, going full time like I would say close to a year ago now and heavily heavily improved probably together with Veles the top two and why do you think people improve so heavily because if they start streaming their POV I think that the main thing is that uh, you have a motivation to play a lot on a day. So, like, let's say I don't really have the insight to how much the pro players play, obviously, because I'm nowhere close to even being 1400, let alone being pro. But when you are pro, let's say you play three or four hours a day, and then you say, okay, I'm tired, whatever. But when you stream, you have a lot of viewers, let's say you have some donations, you have some subs, it gives you a motivation to stay for one more game. When when the chat is like, just stay for one more. I can experience that. I think heart stream is like, heart usually says goodbye like 10 times a stream, but then chat convinces him to play two more games or so. And that helps because every game you play is going to give you some more experience and some practice. Ah, I actually worked the other way around. Just the other day I had a stream that I said, okay, last game. And then I want to play another game, but chat said, uh, Nilly, you already said last game. And I don't want to be called a liar and stop my stream there. 
Uh, all right, so we got a super fast feudal here from ACCM. That is a 20 pop, and it looks like he's going to have enough for uh, a fast castle. Say my name also going up fast with Chinese. You were right about the Chinese being picked here as the top save. So are we just going to see Chukonus and then Harbin Siege from ACCM? Well, that's indeed what they played yesterday against GLC. So feels like a very likely option. Obviously, Chinese, the best boom. You start with three extra villagers, going for lots of aggression. Look at that. Two villagers in the market, three on the blacksmith. There was a bit mistimed there when it came to wood, but everything else looking solid. We'll open with some Chukunus. We'll get some map control. And one Kels get to their desired army composition. They're incredibly tough to be stopped. And then it looks like Ace or uh, Lix is going to go for double castle run by because he's adding wheels to stone here. Also, the latest to Feudal Age is going to be our green player as well. So, do you think that there is a massive difference between this Regicide Fortress without towers and the standard one that would have towers? In some form, yes. Just think about it. Like, four defensive towers? Look at Luke's base now, for example. He could have had, like, two towers spawning at the front, and Chukonu couldn't really do much if they were to come over. So... I think we can do more castle aggression, especially if you have your unit unit out. One petard and some aggression on those walls, and you're already through. Yeah, that's the main reason why we removed towers, because we wanted a close map, but we also wanted to have some early aggression potential, and we decided by this Regicide Fortress instead of Arena. Mm hmm Okay, okay. Well, we see a... Weird build order still by Lux, I would say. One on stone, you did say that, but it doesn't look like he is actually going for that much. It feels weird. So much on gold. I think it's just a one castle play, but not a lot of villagers on wood, so I don't see him adding too many TCs. This looks unconventional by Lux. Yeah, exactly. He made a mining camp on the stone, so that's why I was assuming that he wants to collect more than 50 stone for TCs. And mm -hmm. now he's adding wheels to stone. Maybe he's going to send over the berry wheels that he's going to run out of uh, very soon. Mm, yeah, it could make some sense, but why are you not sending them over already? Well, yes, 260 in the bank. He obviously gets the wood upgrade, so that's nice. And three on stone now, so maybe delayed castle? That huh. could definitely be possible. Like, if it's a delayed castle, though, I feel like it could even be a castle drop on one of the opponents. And just once again, try to make the game messy and allow you to snowball the game with Persians and Imp. And as we can see, ACCM expecting some aggression from Lux, building a defensive monastery. Something we don't see too often from a Celt player, though. Indeed. So he's expecting the run by, and that could definitely be a possibility. For Leaks, Yo is going to have a free TC boom with Persians into Paladins all the way around. I think in the set versus Swords, he played the exact same thing, just with Franks. It's so weird. I still don't understand what Lux is doing. Now adding some more farms. Is he playing fast Imp? This would be such a bad build order for it. But look at that, 500 food, 600 gold, some wood floating, reseeding farms right now. I think this is fast imp into yeah. forward castle. It looks like it because he's getting gloom, and the only reason to get gloom here is if you don't want to spend your food, and you still want to get something done with your TC and you move forward. This could be a cheesy build here for Lix, getting a couple of Arambai out to secure forward castle and then fast imp. I think one of the teams tried doing something like that with Malay yesterday. Okay. The thing is, though, you should not get out if your opponent is just sending some Chukunus in front of your base. Four scouts in one picture? Love that. And it looks like it's going to be a pretty clean uh, imp here. We'll have a couple of a run by out. Do you think that he could just sell a bit of a stone so he can click up a little faster? Ah, it's just so costly. He needs to get the forward castle up. I think I'd rather idle 20 seconds than sell 100 stone. The, your strategy is designed around getting that forward castle up and getting traps out there. Here's Imperial. 
And he's still free on stone, but that kind of explains it, because he will have just enough to drop that castle by the time he reaches in. Ah, but look at... Guys, this is why you try to learn to read score. If you look at the score, you know the strategy of looks. This has to be fast imp. And like, we, we obviously see it, but the opponent should see it as well, by just looking at the score. So say my name should, should now, looking at the score, always camp in front of Luke's base. And he's not really doing that right now, though. But, oh, they find the Vils. <laughs> say my name scout was weak, but they see the Vils. It's only two Vils moving forward, which makes it even more interesting, because I would assume what? that if you do... Three, three times two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, it's, it's like smaller groups. Do you think this is intentional... Oh, it's going to be a monk push. Uh -huh. Lix has a lot of cheesy moments over here. Definitely okay. some more unique build, so to say. Eight villages on gold. I think one monastery at home to already research some upgrades could have been an option. Oh, He's sitting at disaster. Gold right now. Oh, yeah, Chukunu's around. Oh, no. That's a disaster. Oh, no. That's a disaster. Neither of those monasteries go up, and that means that you have no chance for a forward castle now. Oh, and that's what I'm saying. The strategy should never work, right? You know that the aggression is coming. They did send the scouts out. Still looks with four forward villagers. This is so, so risky. Yeah, it kind of feels like he wants to sneak a castle on the opponent, but his imp advantage is already gone. He's at 26 wheels only, so he virtually has no eco. Oh, boy. Which... 26, all the others in the mid-50s. Yeah, I mean, for Lix, that's not unconventional, but... You really gotta wonder if he's gonna be able to do any damage because now ACCM and Say My Name know that he is an imp and they can react. They have the time to do that. Well, to be fair, a monk rush doesn't need the craziest economy, right? He is floating quite some gold. Now has enough stone to build the forward castle. It will be some aggression against Say My Name, but honestly, he should be on stone. His imp timing shouldn't be too poor, and I think Say My Name can defend this. Yeah, he should be able to. He's just adding wheels to stone. One thing that could be problematic is that his stone is very much forward, or at least close to the way that Lix is coming from. But if he just keeps adding Chukanus, he might even be able to deny the monk push, and that is four monasteries channeling his inner Modri. <laughs> uh, 26 villagers, story checks out. Now goes up to 29. Uh, too, many, too many farms for Modri, I would say. And the thing is, though, Two monks at 18.30. That's pretty late. And that castle, honestly, isn't aggressive enough for my taste. It's not. Because it's on a hill, but you will have to move out from the hill to be able to take down Say My Name's castles or so. And Say My Name is probably thinking about Imperial Age, especially once he sees the push coming his way. <laughs> ACC made a ram. I feel like at this point, ACM could send that ramp towards Lix's base and just have the Chuku news of Say My Name march inside. Mm, let's see. Could? How, how do we switch POVs and capture it? Um, shift and the right click on a unit. Shift and the right click? Oh, okay, okay. So, Say My Name couldn't really see that. Okay, now sees the castle is looping around. Uh, as you can see, resources are pretty solid to click up for same name pretty soon. And we'll lose some control over that stone. Has a defensive stone in the back, though. And he's going into Imp, which I think is the more important thing. He will be able to drop a second castle, and he's gonna have twice the trebs. And what will the monks do against Chuko News? I mean, you convert a few, but... Chukunus have good numbers. Imp is coming in for Mr. Yodo as well, which would be interesting to look at. Mm -hmm. Just maybe they can make it enough of a messy game that the mobility of the Mr. Yodo's paladins can rock this game. This is tricky Ooh. because one thing to consider is that even if ACCM goes for Hob and Siege Push, there is nothing inside Lix's base to destroy. <laughs> yeah. Well, he will get a lot of resources and will give Sam and Aim a good spot to rebuild as well. One TC goes down, and if Say My Name starts pushing up the other TC, that could be some scary moments for Say My Name because 
His imp DC is next. Mm-hmm. 50%, but still has to work through stone walls, I would think at least. Now some conversions against the villagers. Uh, Mr. Yo sitting at 92 villagers, actually behind in Bloom of ACM. Impressive by ACM. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Look at the converted villagers from Lix just taking down the wall. And you did say that getting through stone walls might take some time, but it's down. If Lix moves out right now, he could trap down that TC, maybe even in, before Imp reaches. Ah, uh, does say my he know, name. though? It's tricky to find the timing there. 80%, two traps, repair could be there. I think he needed, th like, three traps. Yeah, then I would get scared. It feels a little too late, because by the time you set up the traps, especially with this little bumping and the Chuka news, ACCM and say my name will reach Imperial without problems. 12 range on the Smongs. Feels pretty lovely. Chukunu is running away in time. Now reaching him. I think Bracer could be one of the first ones. I think Pike is maybe not the right unit here for ACCM. Or is it? Uh, it's tricky because I think they're expecting knights from Yo, And he, they're not wrong. And those knights will also be better against the Chukunu because they're Persians. But what are they going to do against the monks? That's the bigger question. And like, say my name is losing a lot of ground here and starts to be scary for him. Redemption now flying in as well. Can convert some buildings there. Not a lot of siege that needs to be converted. Maybe some onagers of ACM in the long run. Only now reaching him. So maybe now some resource support could fly in. Shukunu's engaging against the monks. Yeah, that's... That's a tricky engagement because there is a lot of monks and they have theocracy, so it's easy to micro them. But it's still just 8 monks against 29 Chukunus, so I think you can commit to this. Oh, let's take a look. Pikemen are around. Maybe Pikemen at the front could have been a good option. Chukunus are getting converted, but now the monks have to run. And they do. That's the more important thing. Double layer stone walls for ACM on the left side. And Lix is getting up to 42 villagers now. He also made two monasteries back at home just so that he has six now combined. Oh man, oh man. Very messy eco there for sure. Cavaliers trying to intercept the castle, but castle goes up. Chukunu's now doing their work. This is looking very nice for Vienes. Yeah, it looks like it. From what I've seen in this tournament, fast imp in Regicide Forge doesn't seem to work because if you can stall that push out a little bit, then the fast imping player will have no eco behind it. Mm -hmm. And the big difference to Arena simply is, look at the back. Same name, extra stone, extra gold. And that's something that you don't really have in Arena situations. So don't confuse those maps. Paladin coming in here for Yo, but he's going to be up against a lot of Habadiers. And honestly, there is no real answer for Yo and Lix to just hub and ram here. Yeah. Trying to snipe one trap, we'll do that quite easily. Monks getting some conversions. Doing a reasonable job, but oh god, this is so annoying to micro like eight plus monks now. Yeah, it, it is very annoying. We got some manganoles out for Lix, but obviously can't afford Donature. One thing to consider is that now Yo could send some resources to Lix to help out. Ah, but Yo's economy actually relatively underwhelming only 115 villagers isn't this a spot where we want to see him at 130 he only played three cc instead of the typical four for persians yeah and uh especially for paladins that are very expensive you want 130 140 veils he's dropping a castle in the face of say my name though and the castles for white wolf plus is still standing Okay, let's take a look. Three traps around now. Do you really want to jump there? Could be costly on the Paladin end. Village already there to repair. And the second trap... Oh, it survive! It does. And I think that castle from Lix is gonna go down as well. Yo is trying to get a castle up here, but I think ACM will react immediately to that and take it down. Traps around, Chukunu holding their ground as well. Population wise, we're looking at 205 against 320. And Chinese elite Chukunu here only lacking rocketry. Yeah, Yo is gonna get that castle up, but I don't know how much he can do. And he is trying to do a ram push, but Chukunu's will just stop rams very easily. Chukunu's 
shooting all this down quite nicely now. Harbors and yeah. From now on, it's basically a one unit army composition. The monks won't contribute too much more. What is this? Pop 62 now for Mr. Lux? Oh man. Yeah, and out of that, he has 17 monks. But oh, he's losing yeah. his monasteries as well. He is able to get into the base of Say My Name here with a couple of paladins, and that could be a little bit scary for Say My Name. I don't even know where the monk is, uh, the king is. I think it was uh, old control and comma or something. Oh yeah. So it is in the castle of ACCM, so so far, far away. Yeah, it is very far away. And I mean, Eos push is looking okay-ish here with the rams, but Chukonus should be able to stop it. Although, say my name is going to have some scary moments here against this one. Is it though? Paladin numbers at 22 right now. How is support already there? Yeah, a castle will be lost. But I think he will never really feel the big pressure. Yeah, that's probably the case. I would love to see ACCM starting to attack Lix's base a little bit. Just to, you know, make sure that Lix isn't able to reboom because Lix is adding TCs and if this game drags out very long, Lix is gonna have a shot at rebooming. Mm, the thing is though, if it goes to late game, what's the army composition of uh, Burmese and Spanish player? I think they are fine with just keeping Yo down and playing the long game, because then Celts should just win 2v1 even. Yeah, they should be. Like, Onagers is the only reasonable thing that Burmese can contribute in this. But at this point, it is 222 versus against 160-ish, and... It's only uh, just 12 pardons from Mr. Yo against 45 Celtic hubs with full upgrades. Oh man, does not sound fair. Population advantage now more than 130. And yeah, so much going down. Paladins getting invested over and over into killing some traps, but it just feels like more and more traps are arriving. Indeed, and the eco for ACCM is able to sustain that trap production very, very easily. And Yo is actually at a very underwhelming eco himself. For Pardins, 180 Vios is not amazing. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Now pushed away from one of the gold spots. Not really any trade set up yet. Two gold spots still in the back of Lux base. Something they could share, but... I don't think that will be the main thing. By the way, 13 Harbadiers now. So Lux did get Quite some conversions. Yeah, he actually got a lot of conversions. 15 Arbadius. <laughs> he actually converted more army than he, he made in the entire game. <laughs> okay. But Paladins lost again, and he can't really replace those. Look at that. Six Paladins on the field. Make it five. Make it four Paladins on the field now. Lix is trying to tech into champions against the Hobbs, but he doesn't really have the eco just now for it, and... Even then, Void Raiders will probably be a better option overall for Celts. Or just Chukonus against the champs. Yeah, yeah. But the, we already stopped the plan with looking at his economy, right? Yeah, supplies are coming in, forging, but yes. How many villagers on food? 14 right now. 14 farmers. And now the siege component is in as well for ACCM, so he can just bring in the siege rams. I mean, Yo is like, trying everything that he can. Adding scorpions against the hubs and true canoes, but now Lix is losing all his monks, and now Yo's eco is gonna get pushed. Yo is at free military. Oh man, and that for quite some time. One scorpion, one paladin in the queue, a ram. Oh god, this this looks extremely desperate. And it is. So Vietnam striking back in this one, and I guess our anticipation of picking rich side fortress was right it gave ACM and say my name some time to settle their mindset but it was also about a very risky kind of play from Lix. it was like more than risky this strategy was just i think bad with the fast in monk play from Lix. i think if we have score off 
the strategy becomes so much better because then you don't really know is he building the castle here is he building the castle there is it one castle or rambai is it two castle or rambai is it a monk russian castle age is it an imp but this one was just telegraphed so early that Samanem and ACM had a very easy defense. They did, and uh, especially with the Chukun who's out on the field, there was just no hope for Lix to push. Originally, he wanted to push ACCM, but that was not possible because both of those monasteries were denied, and obviously, the fast team counts on doing a lot of damage while you're in imp and the others aren't, so that didn't happen, and Obviously, Lix fell behind Nico massively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, was like, he had a 26 when the second lowest was 20, uh, 54 or something. Yeah, not pretty at all. And as we can see, didn't really get too many kills in 54 there. How many conversions did he get, though? Uh, where is that? He got... Uh... Where Holy is that? Set? It's on the military, and it says 77 conversions. What? <laughs> what? Uh -huh. That would be a lot. Like, <gasps> this, this is why I was silent about it for a moment, because I am unsure if this is a bug or reality, because that feels like a lot. Well, he did convert, at, like, I saw at least 10 villagers. I saw 15 harbardiers. But it was certainly more, so like more like 25. And then he over and over converted some of the Chukunu. So 77 yeah. feels crazy, but yeah. It, it, it seems legitimate, but in that case, it's actually very crazy. And that, that added, just added up, right? If he had like 77 kills as conversions and 54 other kills, he's actually pretty much in contention there when it comes to overall kills. Yeah, it is. 77 conversions is no joke, but obviously Zico behind that one was just so bad. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. yeah, economy, as you said. Not a single five digit there. And the others were breaking 20Ks when it comes to food and wood. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Relic gold, also nice for ACM. Getting the four relics there against Bumis. Yeah, that's a very, very nice move, being able to yoink those. And it's hard against Burmese, because Burmese know where they are at, so it is easy for mm -hmm. Burmese to pick it up. And now, I'm going to ask you this question. If you are WWP, do you prefer Team Acropolis or Team Islands? If I was you, I would just let my team partner pick. I would just say, Lux, what do you feel like? I think there's no big difference. Yeah. I probably like Team Islands a bit more, but it's just very emotional. Yeah, don't I don't think there's a big strategic difference. I feel like Team Islands could be slightly better because they have a better chance at causing chaos with Licks and Team Islands it is. So... We'll get to game number three here. It's very surprising that Yo and Lix got to a point in their sort of strategies that they actually picked Team Islands as home map now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, why is that so surprising? It, it's not surprising. It's more about like uh, back in the days, you wouldn't have said that Yo and Lix will be a team that frequently picks Team Islands. They are good on Team Islands, but. You know, when you look at these players, especially Lix, it's not like Team Islands should be his favorite map, but they perfected this team chemistry so well that now they are able to go to Team Islands. I'm at pause at 20 seconds, so whenever you're ready, we are good to go. Okay. I had a pause at 10, so I will go full screen and we'll give a countdown. I'm at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. All right, perfect. So welcome to Team Islands. We will have uh, our warm color team, Vietnam Legends. Say my name in yellow to the left as gods. Portuguese for ACCM in red. So indeed, they don't pick the Italians and uh, Portuguese combo here. Yo will be playing Vikings in blue and Lix will be playing Turks in green. But as we discussed before, I feel like it doesn't matter what Civ Lix plays. 
Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think scouts are nice, and if you have scouts out, you can go for light cav even better. The one TC push is so nice with the Turks as well. If he maybe gets uh, castle up on the enemy island, that could be very lethal as well. And a lot of people will scratch their head now. Italians were as an option in the draft. Why are we not seeing them? Um, because it's team islands and Portuguese and Fatorias. <laughs> But it's more about, I think, that they need a good archer sieve for potentially Team Acropolis or so, as you said. Like, they don't have any good archer sieves left. They used the Britons, they had to use Chinese. So, it's probably because they wanted to land anyways. And it is better to use gods on this map maybe to land and then just save up one of your archer sieves. Yeah. The question is, though, do you maybe want to have Portuguese for those instead? Because their archers are better. I think it has to be a plan with Italians on Cape of Storms then. Yeah, that, that could be legitimate because indeed fishing could be a big thing there for them. What's more interesting, though, is Turks, obviously Lix is going to land because that's what he does very frequently. But... I always love when you pick a landing sieve that still has good water. And Turks actually have fully upgraded galleons. They have ship ride, dry dock, and they have elite cannon galleons, maybe even with artillery. So the only thing that they are missing is fast fires. So mm -hmm. even if the landing fails, it's not like Lix has a bad navy that he cannot do anything with in Imperial. Yeah, Turks can really play an incredible late game. And I think in the if you have your opponent going for lots of water, then only having galleons is no problem because galleons are simply the good unit in the late game. The question is, if this game gets like super messy with like everyone landing, everyone contesting, maybe not having fast fires in the long run could be a problem, but I don't really see that. Yeah, that is going to be an interesting one. On the other hand, we won't have fast fires either for our Portuguese players, so that is... Even from that perspective, it looks like we'll have side docks from Yo and uh, ACCM and double front docks from Lix and Say My Name. So very, very similar play styles for both teams. Mm -hmm. Portuguese side docking. That is interesting to me. Normally you want to front dock, no? What's the reason behind that? Uh, maybe you want to go straight galleys because you're up against Vikings. So I feel like... Yeah, your first two or three fire galleys can cause problems to the Viking galleys, but once the Vikings get to like five or six galleys with fletching, suddenly your fire galleys are awful. And I feel like you know that the Vikings will play a galley opening, or it is very likely that they will, so you would just play your own galley opening instead. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. I like to play fire galley opening into more caravels early on then. And try to skip some corners and fuel age. But yeah, maybe mass galley against Vikings. Could be interesting. Saving some gold, having some more HP. And obviously, if you get the game over one hour mark, Portuguese are the strongest sieve on this map. Absolutely. What's more interesting is that Lix has a random house on the left side of their island. And I'm wondering if he originally wanted to do side docks. And then he changed his mind and went for a front dock. Feels very likely looking at this, right? Yeah, transporter now by Lux, no surprise there. Everyone on the way to fuel age, except Mr. Yo, who is already doing a pretty good job of creating a base for himself. Feels like very easy walls, and then the question is on how many galleys is he going for? How aggressively he wants to play fuel age? Indeed, it is going to be a barracks back at home for Say My Name, and I see no villagers or transport coming, so I would I assume... See militia! Oh, men at arms landing. And the transport has come, and I think that's a really bad strategy. Yeah. I think men at arms, you don't have the mobility, your opponent will land you. Yeah, you have a barracks to defend at home, but... Um... Uh... You have to get like three villagers or more to really make it pay off. Yeah, it's tricky because one thing it gives you is that it's harder to clean up than, let's say, scouts. You can't just make spearmen to clean them up. You have to have archers. And you is, are also going to have the advantage of having military right up on reaching feudal. 
But as you said, I feel like it's easier to quick wall against it than like a scout's landing or so. So this is a tricky decision from uh, say my name here. <laughs> That's an interesting party on that boat. Three militia, one scout, one villager. Let's take a look. Minute arm upgrade not coming in. Or at least Why not yet. Was floating. Yeah, what is this? Like, his resources are looking more like Drush FC resources. We have a landing as well from Lix that will be spotted by uh, ACCM and Say My Name. And maybe Say My Name underinvested into Vo Voas a little bit because he kind of seems surprised that his opponent is landing him. What? He was inside and landed himself outside? Oh. What is this? I, th I think he confused the base locations. I think he thinks that uh, Lix was like the right of those walls. Uh, no, he saw the berries. He saw the dog. Uh, maybe he was distracted. What? Maybe he was distracted by the scouts inside his base. But yeah, that feels so confusing. I have no idea what just happened here. Uh, Lix is gonna get his base pushed here by men at arms, though, and. I guess Say My Name finds the long way around with those men at arms. Still, he needs to finish his wars back at home because he's gonna get pushed by scouts very fast here and he doesn't have a spearman to defend just yet. Oi, 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 full disaster. And those men at arms, yeah, they saw the defensive tower now running over, but Mr. Yo fully walled and he can just play galley, be galley on one side, should have the better civilization there. This one is looking good for the Chinese. This is looking indeed very good, although Yo could be disrupted very easily because one thing to consider is that Lix is attacking Say My Name, who is the landing sieve, which means that ACCM is untouched and Yo might have to defend against those men at arms and archers soon. Hmm. Someone in my chat thinking, yeah, maybe the TC, um, Say My Name thought that the TC was close to the berries. That's not important. At the 10 minute 30 mark, you don't have a single villager under the TC anyways. Like, the TC should never fire. Yeah. Wars are up now for Say My Name. It looks like both Lix and Say My Name lost his fishing eco. ACCM and Yo still has it, so... Eco should be dead even, and indeed that's the case. Yo with Stone Wars. <laughs> okay, and an outpost there. Okay, yeah, probably wants to see if he's getting towered. He's gonna have second layers... Uh, all across his wall, so he should be good to go. But his galley numbers are a little weaker than the opponent's, and Lix's landing won't be able to push Say My Name anymore. Mm, let's take a look. Galley numbers 9 to 8, indeed. Trying to chase around a bit. Obviously, fighting next to your docks is a nice thing. Let's compare food counts of our two water players. I can see 400 for Yo. ACM, not even 200. Indeed, that is actually pretty rough. The Gothic Men at Arms will help you get through wars as well, because they have the building attack bonus, and Yo has to invest quite a lot into this stonewalling, so that distracts him a little bit from water combat. Archer is now on the way for Licks, and that could actually mean that ACCM loses his berries if the archers come in for Licks here. Oh yeah, could be ugly. Did get a lot of the berries already. Has lots of villagers there. Eight working, one at uh, nine earlier. Uh, galleys. Oh, we're finding some fishing ship killed here. Good job by Mr. Yo. That is a nice find indeed. He's going to lose some galleys, but he killed two fishing ships, which is important. Because that is what helps you get to cast damage. As you said, Yo has a better fishing ship count already and a better food count. Uh, this will be... A relatively short distance, right? The moment Yo sees, okay, I'm in cast age, my opponent isn't. He can push quite easily. Defensive tower at his gold. Trying to defend here. He's doing a reasonable job. And yeah, Mr. Yo just so good at preventing damage in those spots. Indeed, his wood line is going to be idled by an archer, though. And I mean, that's the difference. I feel like Yo is suffering from a bit more damage than ACCM does. And even though Yo is going to have a better cast leash timing over here, right now the galley numbers are better for ACCM, and he's got the extra HP on those as well with Portuguese. Oh, not the best micro by Mr. Yo. Oh, that's not really going... He's not split microing at all. Good chase by ACCM. 
he finds so many kills here that he shouldn't. Yeah, he's actually cleaning up Yo's fleet here, and it doesn't matter that Yo is in castle. Yo hasn't clicked up still, because I think he's just so distracted by those men-at-arms and archers, forced to make defensive towers, and this is the difference, I think, that Mr. Yo and Lix are not dealing that much damage to ACCM on land, and Yo loses his entire fleet here. Wow. And that's honestly... I, I would say someone like Leary, Hera, Viper... They are getting away with way more kills there against ACM. They are moving away, trying to micro. Maybe there's some lag issue, but actually they should just play on West oh. India with reasonable pings, no? Indeed. And uh, Lix finds a hole inside uh, the walls of Say My Name. And now Say My Name suffers from some damage, but I feel like it is always better to have your landing player suffer from the damage than your water player, right? Yeah, probably, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's such a depends answer, but I would say it's so much easier to focus on something if you're the land player, anyways. If the water player ha has some losses, it just feels more ugly. And Lix's base is also getting pushed now. And at the end of the day, despite the fact that Yo had resources for castle earlier, say my name or ACCM reaches castle age a lot faster than him. And say my name is heavy on stone and. We shouldn't underestimate the gods being able to start getting Huskars out early, as it looks like Say My Name will dive on the gold mine of Lix. Okay, three men at arms, really good against towers, and reaction was rather late. Tries to build another tower there at the left hand side. Ah, should be in range. Is the men at arms focusing on that tower? It does. Some of it just will go down. Yeah, indeed. I feel like this is a good trade here for Say My Name. Like, he's killing a lot from Lix, and uh, he's also idling some of the wood lines for the Yo. Yo is back to 9 galleys, but he's going to be up against 14 uh, war galleys with ballistics immediately, but there is the castle drop from Lix in the face of ACCM. Okay, oi, 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 oi. and how, how can you defend that? Oh, it's defend also... university won't deal with that one, it's actually over chopped. And Lix also inside the base of Say My Name here, transported around the walls, and that's light cavern crossbows. Oh, so much action going on everywhere. Light cap upgrade helping a bit there, getting extra armor as well. And he's sitting under the tower, Say My Name. Does not have enough stone to build a second one, apparently. Uh, he's going to be squeezing out one of those, but I think it's still important to point out that Vietnam has a big eco lead compared to... Um, our cold color team here, and uh, well, that castle is gonna be delayed a little bit from Lix, thanks to the spearman at least. Okay, but still should not be denied, is what I feel. ACM going back on water, trying to buy some more wood, price already reasonably high there, and ballistics now coming in for him. Now two caravels being mixed in. Yeah, it's tricky because Yo is back to decent war galley numbers with a very late double bit axe upgrade here for him. You can mm. tell that he was distracted by that landing. And the last player to cast Lage will be our yellow player, who is suffering from a lot of damage now on his gold mine. Lix is doing an excellent job with those raids. Oh god, he is so annoying. No idea how he makes so much happen with so little army over and over again. <sighs> Mr. Yo continues to stay on War Galley here. Four docks for him. Now on the other side, only three docks for our red player. Armies clashing again. Should be slightly better for ACCM. Indeed, especially with Caravals shooting on top of those stacked up War Galleys. ACCM is playing a very good game here. Like... He has to mine stone and defend with guard towers against the Janissaries and Monk push. Soon Say My Name is going to have to do something to push Mr. Yo, otherwise ACCM will start falling behind on water, I believe. Uh, let's take a look. It's a really, really even fight. And I don't even know if it's such an even fight. Is that good for Caravals? I think now that there is not a lot of ships on the field, it is not that great for Caravos, but obviously as they start stacking up again, it's gonna be great. Guard tower defense from ACCM, but he's going to lose his stone mine. 
and he won't be able to drop additional guard towers. Lick starts to influence this game very heavily, whereas Say My Name is not able to hit Mr. Yo anymore. Yeah, some archers, some men at arms, that was it. And what do you do against those janissaries? Uh, this looks so dire. Yeah, it is looking really bad because janissaries are so hard to kill. Like, they just outrange mangonels. They have so close range to monks that they can just snipe monks easily. And ACCM is forced to run away. ACCM has to TC a gold mine, but there is the castle coming in from Say My Name as well. But I think that's the wrong place to drop it. You have to drop it in the face of Yo, because otherwise you lose water. Uh, yeah, he is buying some time there. Defensive tower might even... It's only six villages for Say My Name. Could this tower even stop the castle? Uh, maybe there is archers coming in, and I think that the castle could indeed end up being denied. Let's see, villagers still, reasonable HP. Don't focus the archers, focus the villagers. 57%. Uh, I don't think this is going up. Yeah, it's not going up and it's gonna be denied. And that's a disaster from Say My Name. If he deletes it, he will still have enough for a castle and he needs to drop it in the face of Yo. ACCM's defense is very good, by the way. Like, he's under a lot of pressure, but his ship numbers are still just as good as Yo's, but... Yo is on three TCs. And I think, look at the red ping on the minimap. ACCM is telling his teammate that he, you need to attack our uh, water player. Now walling in the castle even. Five villagers still alive. Maybe trying to get some mangonels out. He really wants that castle. And yeah, it feels another water clash coming up. Indeed. And that is actually pretty decent for those caravels because quite a lot of those war galleys are stacked up. And uh, there is no extra pierce armor on either of those ships' ballistics in for ACM. There is no ballistics either for uh, Mr. Yo. So it is very possible that uh, you can just out-micro those Vor galleys. And there is the second castle for Say My Name. Okay, only five villagers this time. Yo sees it. Deletes the mining camp. Oh, builds a defensive castle on his own. Indeed, and uh, it looks like Say My Name will bail out on this once again. ACCM transport its true villagers to mine gold on the opponent's island because he doesn't have gold from his own island. <laughs> well, still one small spot, but yeah, pushed away from two there for sure. Not pretty. I think he will lose a starting TC pretty soon. Indeed, he will, and Lix is getting close to another castle, and that is going to be in the face of uh, ACCM. Like, right next to that university most likely a castle being dropped here by say my name to the awkward spot but this could this be denied again by a tower no this time it's way more villagers 10 instead of six tower can't really be built and oh wait 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 war galleys are coming but 80 percent yeah it's just a little too late here it looks like say my name still wants to get that castle up and he's trying to take that tower down with some mangonels so, that castle might still go up, but now WWP has a massive eco lead. 110 against 145, they are reasonable advantage for sure. The castle that you anticipated is indeed coming down from Lux and ACM. Where is he getting resources now? I think he's completely dry in like a minute. Yeah, it looks like he's doing a mass migration. Building a TC on that other wood line and Imperial Age coming in here from Vistayo while Lix is dropping a second cast on the face of ACCM. Oh, they are so annoying. They are so good and Team Islands. Ah, Sam and Aim going for another attack now. 70% there. And oh, he gets a Haskell out. A Haskell obviously is so good in tanking the arrows. Yeah, it could be crazy. And uh, that cast is at 70%. And more Huskars are coming, and I don't see Lix being able to stop Huskars on his own island. Yo could definitely do it with Berserks. Oh, let's take a look. Another Mangonel now. Can he maybe get the kill? If he gets a Villager, that alone could be enough. But no, Huskars should deal with that one. Mangonel survives as well. I think another try. Oh, loses one Villager. Uh oh, uh oh. Only four builds? I'm not sure if the castle will go up. Yeah, he just kills the tower. Yeah, it should be no problem. Yeah, the 
Gothic Huskars should be able to take it down and that castle will go up. It's a very important castle by the way because it denies two golds and the stone. Yeah, and just think about how differently this game would play out if you were to, allowed to sling in Castle Age. I think then the Huskar sling could be bigger, we could already have a Turk player in Imp as well, and land focus would be even higher, but Mr. Yo, just fu full control on water now, and I think ACM will have to give this one up. Oh uh, yeah, that's very very rough, especially because Yo can make traps soon, and he can just trap down the castle of Say My Name. I think the only way for ACM and Say My Name back into this game is if the Huskars start pushing Yo very heavily, because... They're losing water because ACM is getting pushed hard. So they have to do the same damage to Mr. Yo. But look at the Fudik of Say My Name. So many adults forced now. He has 15 on food. More villagers going down. So many farms blocked. Won't be pretty. Won't be easy for him to mess up those numbers. Indeed. Uh, especially against Janissaries. Like, Janissaries will be able to take down the Huskars. And uh, with that. ACCM and say my name, say goodbye to this game, and it just continues. It is just nearly impossible to beat WWP on Team Islands. Yeah, they're they're so good there. It's simply like Mr. Yo is so good at defending, and Lux is so good at doing damage, and those are two crucial skills you need on this map. Absolutely, I think. It tells a lot about the game to say that Lix killed 42 villagers and he lost 11. And he wasn't even walled back at home. Wow. That's really few. Sick. Wow. Well, as we mentioned, Turks are really good in those scenarios as well. And the Janissaries dominating there in the end. N nice game. Well, wild one for sure. Yeah, indeed. It was a wild one. And Lix, the weakest eco, or at least one of the weakest ecos in the game, but it is just the combination of Yo and Lix here. Yo, my, by far the best eco, because Yo was able to hold off the attack, and Lix was able to do much more damage to ACCM than what Yo suffered from. Yo's eco was pretty much untouched. He lost five wheels in this game, and I think four of those were fishing ships. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's so so good how he defended so well. I, I'm I'm impressed every single time I, I see him play on those maps and how he how he prevents damage. Yeah, his defense is very nice. I guess part of that comes from the fact that he plays in the same time zone as many other Chinese players. So when he plays one v ones, he often gets matched up against very aggressive players. So. He's got the chance to learn how to defend against those. Does he though? Um, I, th I think his sleeping rhythm is like completely European, no? I don't know. I th he stays up till 6 a.m. every single day. Could be. Um, and I also don't think that he's playing that many like 1v1s uh, when there isn't really any top players like Viper or MBL or... Hera playing, so mm -hmm. it's it's more like he only plays 1v1s when there is like a worthy top 8 opponent, and mm -hmm. if not, then he just plays the team games Nomad whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, true. Our team games are going at all times, but yeah, and well, now I'm excited. VNA, second home map, Cape of Storm so far, both teams winning their respective home maps. But that favors the team that wins Arabia. This is why Arabia is so important, because if you win Arabia, all you have to do is win your own home maps and you're good to go. I will be paused at uh, 10 seconds, and whenever you're ready, we can get going. So, okay. we are indeed going to Cape of Storms here, and you were right about the Italians. Yeah, could, could make sense, right? I think Portuguese could have been an option as well, but simply how long the games were, it kind of feels weird to not go for Portuguese nowadays. So Italians over here, a reasonable choice for sure. And I only need to update the score and then we can jump into game number three. I'm also paused at 10 seconds, so I can say 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and we go all right 
So, I guess it's your turn to introduce the teams. I did it in the previous game, so now it's your time. <laughs> okay, we have Sam and Aim, a player that we used to call VNS Yellow for many, many years, and some people still like to brag how old school they are and still calling him Yellow. Luckily, this time in the same color. Going for Italians will have a big task ahead of him to hold and contest water and ACCM playing the hunt should do really well there should have a fish boom should go for scouts on the other side Lux, he won't have a problem throwing himself in there bulgarians men at arms feels very likely some aggression and we see mr yo going for the wild approach 150 extra food means you can send more villagers onto wood to get that dock up nice and early and should send a villager pretty soon there and should probably have the best fish boom out of all sifts. Indeed, he's got three boards to work with just like everybody else. Early dock, fish boom, then the extra board to work with and uh, the extra food you start with. Lithuanians have a great start here on this map and an even better follow up with the predictable positions of those relics being always close to that middle forest. So... Yo is going to be able to pick up, I would say, at least two relics. So it's going to be a very tough challenge for ACCM to prevent that one from happening. Yeah, I, I would think so as well. You need so much aggression to really control this. I think their main advantage simply comes from their strong economy, though. And yeah, strong economy means more map control, means more relic control. Lithuanians... Arguably the strongest civilization on this map, and maybe even the strongest civilization, relatively speaking, on all maps. Yeah, at least one of the strongest, because they have an extremely good hybrid map build. They are very dangerous when they get relics, so they have like a very good start. They have a good follow-up to that, and their late game is extremely dangerous. So they are just good in every aspect of the game. And that's something that shouldn't really be there, balancing-wise. But something we have, and that's why we've seen them banned very early, picked as first, second, or third very early as well. The big question, though, is how much are we committing onto water, and how wild is Lux going to play it? Well, he, Lux will definitely not go for water, because he's going to mill those ostriches here to start the day with. Ah, uh, that's a debatable decision. I'm not really sure if I like that or not. I know that I don't like it. What is so important on this map? By the way, same name losing a villager there under STC. And this is something I really don't understand. You have three boars anyways. You have the normal starting resources. Not a big fan. I feel like part of that could be the thing that if you don't go for a dock, you need still two buildings to go to Feudal. So if you really want to go for like a land aggression with men at arms, you will need a mill at some point, but it's... Why not, why not the barracks? It's, yeah. You want to have the barracks early on anyways, because you want to have the three militia finished by the time you reach Feudal Age. Indeed. And uh, he's gonna go for a fast Feudal here. Most likely try and squeeze in a 20 pop Feudal for fast men at arms, something that say my name should be prepared for. The Vietnamese team are both on water, but they don't have a lot of fishing ships out in comparison to Mr. Yo Yo is only on four, well, already on four fishing ships. Hmm. Uh, boom will be so good. I see him at only one. Wow, the comparison is unreal. And while well, going for lots of walls here, trying to defend, they know that looks can go for some aggression. And as you can see, uh -huh. Right, Barracks is now up as well, so the building wasn't an issue. Indeed. Say my name found the villager of Mr. Yo on the dock, but Yo already had looms, so he can't actually take that down. And indeed, it's going to be 10 gold taken, which is enough for the Bulgarian fast men at arms. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay at 3, that is true. Then again, your archer or scum follow-up won't be that pretty because you have to go onto gold eventually to get fletching. Scouts trying to get some more intel. Same name. Seeing that one and seeing... Okay, he only has four on wood. And oh, trapping the scout. Nice move. So, indeed, that scout is going to get trapped in there. Nice move overall for... Uh, 
the Chinese theme. Say my name has to go for some wacky walls here as uh, Lix is trying to pick that villager off, but that won't happen. So, after all, I think the biggest problem for Say My Name is that he's got double forward golds, and those are very, very bad gold spawns for him. So he's got to go for some very much forward golds. Well, I could go for one Low Elo Legends lumber mining camp there. Actually, I think that could have made lots of sense. Touching the gold, the big one, and having one tile away from the small one. You can put like 12 perfect villagers then. And Lix is going to come in with a tower rush. He could hit two of the wood lines from the Vietnamese team. With uh, one tower, I believe. And uh, the man at arms, they're actually trying to go through probably the least important part of the wall there. Yeah, yeah, I didn't really scout the wood line of ACCM. And yeah, we can see nice team play, opening the walls, rewalling there in a nice team composition. We'll go through, not on stone at home though, I believe. Yep. So yeah, you don't even have stone at your home base on this map. So not following this one up with the next tower. Yo finds a villager pick for Say My Name here. And uh, the early aggression seems to work out quite well. For now, as you said, there is no follow-up to the tower, although Lix actually finds a stone mine here on the south, because there is some extra stone on the south, not a lot, and this seems to be a well-prepared and well-planned tower rush, because he's gonna have a follow-up to this, which is quite rare in the case of tower aggressions, because players don't often go for those additional stone mines. Mm hmm But still, behind this, fishing ships are fishing away. Indeed, and Vietnam has a persistent free villagers lead overall. And I wonder where Lix can drop that second tower. Like, he can deny some space from ACCM. But are those towers doing enough damage? Hmm. Also remember, like, 50 wood, 125 stone invested for your opponent, some moving, and 100 wood. It's not a massive victory pushing him away. Yeah, indeed. And, uh... We have some galleys coming out for Say My Name, interestingly, instead of fire galleys. They'll be better at killing the fishing eco of the opponent, but they will struggle a little bit more against fire galleys, plus you have to micro them more. Mm -hmm. In the long run, the better unit though, so I don't mind this one too much. And the moment you have three, you can do quite well. Uh-oh, breaking through ACCM's TC, stone gate is coming in, double stone gate, nice defense. That was a very nice defense, and he also managed to get some hits on uh, the men at arms, so they're slowly getting weaker. And as you said, now it's a 7 villagers lead for uh, ACM and Say My Name, and when those galleys hit Yo, Yo is going to lose his entire fishing eco. Hmm. And this is like, Lux, he could have had three fishing ships working for the last 10 minutes, right? And not show his strategy that massively. Yeah, it's tricky. I feel like if he adds fishing ships, he might not be able to afford this aggressive man at arms opening immediately. Hmm. I think you do, but uh, I obviously didn't test it. Thing is, you, you just save so much, not building the mill. You simply generate so much more food early on, so you just send one more village on wood. But yeah, I didn't test it. Maybe he did. Maybe he thought, okay, those are the 30 seconds that are really helping us with our aggression. We'll have uh, some more towers coming in here for Lix, and ACCM was forced to make an archer range, not something that you necessarily want to do if you're a pocket, but this is the moment where Yo is going to lose his fishing eco, and that's going to be a big eco lead for Vietnam. Oh yeah, this could... Oh, I feel the five-game series coming here, Lidakor. This, this one's looking really good for the Vietnamese. It is. It uh, looks like Yo has... Uh, Forging on those scouts, though. So this is not a good fight for ACCM, but he still commits, probably just to make sure that he can slow down this land aggression so they can play a slower and more boom focused game. Interesting to see forging that early there from the Lithuanian player and now going for some walls that are not going to the center wood line. I'm a bit surprised by a lot of plays. It, it, to me, it feels like WWP didn't test this map a lot. Yeah, it's tricky. Because it all oh, Lix is coming with forward docks, though. This is something that we have seen from other teams. Say my name will have an easy time spotting this, but 
cleaning this up is going to be a bit of a pain for them. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Have we, now we're going for some galley production. I think there's the spot where going for fire galley might have been an option. Oh, his galley's at the other side. Oh, this will be annoying. This will be so annoying for Sam and M. I think there's the spot where you ask ACM, could you maybe build two fire galleys? Could make the defense so much easier. Yeah, indeed. And ACM instead is just adding fishing ships. ACM is a crazy <laughs> fish boom. He's got oh, yeah. 16 fishing ships, yet his castle is just still going to be slower than Mr. Yo's castle. Yeah, speaks volumes when it comes to Lithuanians there for sure. But he can click up any second, actually only lacking some gold. Now Fire Galley is out, but I think Samanaim should be able to hold this. Yeah, especially with some scouts from ACCM running around. He picked off a will from Yo, and he could also hit the wood line of Licks so that he's able to just slow down that production of ships and it's a 26 villagers lead and i think the big deal is that say my name will go into castlage way faster than Lix. and also hold water that means they could increase their water advantage even further four scouts at the top for acc i'm not finding any real damage right now one spearman for the defense shaman name buying some stone Ah, it tries to rush out the defensive tower, has to save his gold. Indeed, but ACM is doing an excellent job raiding with those remaining scouts. He picks off another will from Mr. Yo, and he's just being so annoying with those scouts. And he brings in free archers, something that Yo doesn't have a defense for right now. Wow, how did they slip through? <laughs> oh, through the armies, and now Spearman defense is not a thing anymore, but Yo will reach Castle Age any second, so I would be surprised if we see more than two villager kills. It's interesting to point out that look at the galley numbers for Say My Name here. And this is where the waves and the hill bonus comes into play because they're actually attacking down hills. Hmm. Yeah, that talk is going down pretty fast. The other one already down before that. Three fire galleys of Mr. Yo still chilling on water, not going for the attack. And even if he kills like five fishing ships of ACM, not sure if he will be too hurt. Indeed, nice micro from ACCM as well, cleaning up the spears. He will lose his army here, but the Vietnamese team is gonna have a crazy eco lead. And with this many ships on water, they can just keep adding docks and add maybe even more fish. I ah, love the forward talk by Sam. My name could easily go for that. Even fire ships now being researched by Mr. Yo wants to contest that a bit more. Didn't rebuild any water himself. Uh... ACM now saying, oh, I will lose some water. And indeed, he will. It's worth pointing out that the ping on the minimap is yellow. So it seems like Say My Name was telling his teammate, hey, you're losing your fish and watch out. Oh, okay. I saw it as blue, kind of weird. Hmm. Okay, what are the next steps here? What can Lux do here? He's kind of mining through his stone there, so massive crapost rush is not really on the cards. Probably not. I feel like Lix doesn't really have a lot of options because he's still far from Castle Age and Fuel Age units won't do much here. He's trying to tower the opponent's gold. That's the best thing he can do because both of Say My Name's gold are forward. Hmm. 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 Next steps will be interesting. We have a TC at the very top for Mr. Yo. Monastery is placed, but I don't see too many monks on the field. I won for now. Goes for the front. Conversion there. Oh, it's happening. Indeed it does, and that's an important conversion at the beginning here. Especially because ACM has to deny the relics from the opponent. Now, one thing to consider is that with Italians, like you're expecting Lithuanians to go for heavy cavalry, and it's very hard to stop when they have so much relics, but Genoese crossbows is one of the rare things that could stop them fairly easily. But how? You don't have stone? You don't have stone at your start. You have to, if you want to go for castles, you have to go at the bottom, uh, at the top. Yeah, but that is more like a late game thing. I think in mid game, like right now, you can just match the knight numbers with Huns nicely. It's more about what happens if we go into Imperial and suddenly there is like Cavalier or Paladins with uh, the extra relics. All the knights, though, from ACCM could be hitting Lix here really hard. Yeah, I think at this point, the front players aren't really dictating the game anymore. From here on, it's ACM against Mr. Yo. 
And ACCM has an 18 villagers lead in that fight. Oh, good for him. And I don't know if he did Gilnet, but his food echo is so good. Mr. Yo still investing in more into water. That will be completely lost cause. And I, 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 I look still deep in Feudal Age. 500 food only. Yeah, and he's about to lose some more wheels on that stone mine. And uh, as you said, Yo investing into water doesn't seem to pay off because uh, he's not getting water for himself or adding a lot more fishing shit, but he's also not killing the opponent's fish. Hmm. Well, you actually might find some more now, but no, that spotted looks finally on the way to Castle Age pretty damn late. Obviously, he did make quite a lot of stuff happen, did get Mr. Yo in a reasonable position, but I still feel like the water just put them behind so so much indeed this is the tricky thing on this map because this is a very very open land map so aggressive strategies can work but if you under invest into water you could easily get punished for that and that's what we are seeing here yo however already on two relics in a moment and that's something to pay attention for because as things stand he's gonna have at least three mm-hmm yeah, looks like it. Good situation for him to maybe create a comeback, but still long, long way to yeah, ever get to that one. Now ramps being built to clear up the tower forward. Is he, CM? Is he adding new stables or is he thinking about imping? Oh, that's tricky. Because he's very far away from imping, and if you go for a greedy approach of uh, just an imp here, you could get easily overrun by those knights that already have the extra attack from the relics. Instead, I think it's gonna be a Krapos from Lix here. Like a forward Krapos trying to contest those gold mines seems likely. That's 360 stone, so it's enough for one Krapos indeed. Mr. Yo with knights around. Where are the knights of ACM? Going more to the top, trying to raid there, and yeah, say my name, has to bail on that area. Indeed, and ACCM is going to pick up two relics, no problem, but tell Yo or the Yoing the third one, so Yo is going to be sitting at three relics, which is fairly decent with Lithuanians. Mm -hmm. As you can see, 10 plus 4 it's like right now. And, well, everyone going further to the top. Let's see how much ACM will be able to do with his knights. I, I didn't see him killing anything of significance for quite some time. I uh, didn't. He definitely was more on the defensive, trying to clean up those towers. But this might be the moment, although there is a couple of monks here getting some conversions nice and easy. Uh, one conversion, now enough knights for the defense. ACCM needs to run. Oi, oi, oi! Lots of things going right to potentially allow a comeback. Indeed. And the eco is still amazing for ACCM and say my name, but if we compare the two pockets, it's 83 versus 100, and the Lithuanian player is going to have way better knights, so it's not that much in the favor of ACCM here. But say my name is now on stone with a TC. And that could allow a castle to be dropped, and Conix from Lix will soon hit the field. Hmm. Thing is, though, the TC of Say My Name is so far to the front that if Yo continues to produce knights, and it looks like he is, that TC might go down before he even gets to castle, before he even gets to Genoese. Yeah, but in the meanwhile, Lix is just losing his entire eco here. He just lost like 10 wheels on the wood line. He's got a hole on the gold mine that ACCM apparently didn't notice. But uh, uh, oh, yeah. uh, he could have killed like 5 more wheels there still. Lix is back to 47 wheels, which is far from ideal. And some villagers hauling those in again. <laughs> oh, he's doing some cute moves, but... Uh, I don't think that's the long-term plan for him there. Buy some food for an endless cost already. Oh, he I actually opens up the... Gold. He opens up the gold mine, so Lix is gonna have to run. Lix is busy raiding because he's got some conics inside ACCM's eco. Mm. Oh, this is so tricky. Because there's a lot of knights from Yo on the north, and ACCM might not take a great engagement here. Oh, 
he is not taking a great engagement at home for sure with all the conics still slaughtering some villagers and yeah the defense there is fine for accm and finally accm realizes the home uh, but lix is just so dead right now he's at 43 bills and uh we're getting closer and closer to that genoese play from say my name he's at 500 stone I guess he would just drop a castle close to that Kraypost and start making Genoese crossbows, or drop a castle in the north and push Mr. Yo from that direction. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. At the bottom, there are no real important resources. And at the top, you know, opponent will have TCs, you will have TCs. And also, you want to protect your own stone. So dropping it at the top feels like the right move. Licks another Kraypost drop in the face of Say My Name's other TC here. And that's going to be successful as well. But... Will those Kraypaws drop influence the game by that much at this stage? Well, pushed away from the gold. We'll find some more villager kills there, so I don't mind that. And Lux is doing a relatively big amount of damage for how bad of a position he actually is. That is true, but that basically is the definition of Lux's game style. <laughs> yeah. Imperial Age, though, coming in first for ACCM, shortly followed by Yo. But this is the moment where Genoese crossbows could really start mattering for uh, our yellow player. Oh, let's see if we can produce enough there and on what numbers he can get. He actually has some conics converted for now. It didn't start any Genoese production. Oh, he is struggling quite a bit, right? Lost. One TC, about to lose the second TC. It's not that easy for him to muscle up numbers. Exactly. Especially because he's struggling a bit with eco balance. He's floating 1500 wood. He could click into Imperial uh, if he balanced his eco here. And I think that's the plan soon for him. So you will lose a second TC there as well. Over 100 population lead now for... Our Vietnamese players. The thing is, though, the, the population is getting more and more inefficient, right? Water is getting weaker, and also the war galleys are getting less efficient. Yeah, this is tricky because Lix is doing quite a lot of damage for what bad position he is, as you said, with the conics. But it's going to be two Imperial Age players, and Lix is never going to get into Imperial in this game. So, yeah, 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 it is all in the hands of Yo to snowball this, and he might be able to do it against Hans alone. But when there is Genoese crossbows coming in for Say My Name, suddenly those Cavalier, even though they will have free relics, they won't be enough. Mm, some weird traffic jam at the wood line here for Say My Name in the center. But it's just not really knowing what to do with their life. And Sio is going to bring in his heavy cavalry. Numbers are way better for ACCM, and he's going to have cavalry in a moment. And Yo disengages immediately. He wants to wait for his own imp. Well, has to. Do we maybe see some interception with the Genoese at the top? Not really going to happen. Some more, uh, some more monks are being brought in. And yeah, both players disengaging. ACM, could he maybe go for the counterattack? Could he maybe go for the raid? I think it's risky because Lithuanian cavalry getting into your eco probably is just as bad as uh, you getting to the opponent's eco. So it's a big risk and I don't think that they need to take that risk. It's more like, I'm gonna have cavalry in a moment and we should just fight this. They can take the game slow because they'll have Genoese crossbows soon. We have a second castle for Say My Name to secure his gold on the south. And uh, cavalry is in a little faster for ACCM. This is the moment when they want to fight. <laughs> but Maceo knows about that one. Focusing down the Genoese with the TC, nice move there, but we'll lose most of them. Celeste disengage, 15 more seconds till he gets to Cavaliers. But Paladin already clicked and Hans, research Paladin fast. Indeed, faster working stables helps a lot here and it's 140 versus 240 for Paladins. It's a big difference maker. And we also have 55 of those out there for ACM. So. This is tricky, because he needs to keep the castle alive from yellow player to make sure there is more Genoese crossbows coming in. But he also needs to keep those cavaliers alive so he can get pawed in. 
Uh, Paladin upgrade coming in for Mr. U as well. And then you have to question, if you're researching Paladin, sending some Cavaliers to raid there, is that the real option you want to go for? Apparently, he wants to buy some more time for himself. Lix is, by the way, doing an excellent job with the Conics. Like, he just keeps raiding and raiding. Lix in this game killed 62 villagers. Wow. How did you get to those numbers? That's just crazy raids. He's trickling in conics, and I think that ACM has to pull every cavalry unit that he has on the north, so he doesn't have anything to defend with. Still, I think it's just a matter of time until we start seeing more Genoese crossbows on the field, and now it's Paladins, as you said, so they can start rampaging the eco. Look at the fishing eco of Say My Name, by the way. He's got docks right next to Yo's base. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy what he went for. 41 fishing ships right now. And the castle probably going down for Yo here, but he's got pod in just in time and the Jembos aren't fighting here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just watching there. Evan Bracer, so they could really help out. Stand ground and Paladins are winning. One trap going down though. Second one is getting focused. Traps are now going for that one. I think the castle of Say My Name should easily survive here. And then the question was, is that a fight that Mr. Yo was that happy about? I am fairly certain that he's happy about the fact that he's got 60 Paladin and his opponent only at 30. Oh yeah. So that's a lot of Paladin numbers advantage here for Yo. And the brutal thing is that Yo is doing this alone. He cannot be slung by Lix here, so this is mm -hmm. just Mr. Yo by himself. Oh, we did say earlier, Lithuanian's a crazy, crazy civilization. Also remember three relics ticking away for him. Obviously everyone getting all the upgrades for the cavalry here, so Paladins are... Having all the upgrades and ooh, Paladin Raid again at the bottom against Say My Name. Scores getting closer and closer. Indeed, and really credits to Lix for doing so much damage. Lix is at 88 villagers killed. It's just a couple of conics, but it hurts the eco of ACM so much and ACM is down to 100 villagers. Uh oh, uh oh, 158 for Say My Name. Heavy, heavy over Boom. Needs to sling some there. How are his resources looking? He has to be floating so much. He's floating 2k wood, and he's got 58 on food, so he should be floating some food. But, indeed, it is now 40 Paladins for ACCM, so he's back on track, but he's still up against a lot more Paladins, and those are way better Paladins as well. Uh oh I'm just getting somewhat closer. If I still look at the numbers, it feels like VNA are looking way better, over 100 population lead, but that's so much on water. Indeed. Some of their military is also on water, so fire ships war galleys that aren't able to influence the game and uh elite genoese crossbow coming in for say my name but it is now rams on the way for you to take that castle down and this castle must stay up on the north uh, he has one behind there but yeah production won't be that pretty more raids are being dealt with this is the spot where some or some walls should be built so that they finally stop the ratings at the bottom that is absolutely right, and you can tell that Say My Name knows that castle's important. He sends in the Vios to clean that up. Now it's Elite Genoese crossbows though, and if you get a meat shield in front, they will be able to pick these cavalry off. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and that's the problem again. It's a bit of the repeat of the Registered Fortress game, but felt like WWP were going for a one unit army composition. Yeah, indeed, it is just their style. Look at the fish for Say My Name. He's got 41 fishing ships on one screen, and he's got like 20 more on the south. One of the reasons why he has a massive overboom is because he's just so, so full of fishing ships. Yo is still doing an insane job raiding. Yeah, but um, how, how much do you need to raid to get back into it? Population lead now 160. Coin is coming in for ACCM, who is, well... Losing more and more, but GG is getting called. We're going to game five. We are indeed, and this is one of those setups, as you said, where we know how this duo plays. Lix playing an aggressive and massive game and then just lets Yo snowball. But if Yo isn't able to snowball this, and part of that is thanks to the fact that there is Genoese crossbows on the field, and then it is a win for Vietnam, and... Uh, it uh, very much looks like Vietnam will have a shot at winning this series, which would be probably an upset overall. Oh yeah, absolutely.
Uh, what are the seeds here? It feels like seed three against seed six, something like that. Uh, something like that. Yeah, it's legitimate. So, if you consider that we have teams like Tempo, GLA, Suomi, WWP, at least seed five for Vietnam, maybe even seed six. Yeah, I think Suomi didn't even have four top four. So yeah, feels like six or seven. But definitely, they were also second place in their group. And the WWP won their group, but they almost lost the, the winner's game to Salts. And I'm fairly certain that Vietnam came in prepared from those. And uh, so far, everybody has won their own home map. So mm -hmm. if the tendency continues, then this should be an advantage for the White Wolf Palace. We're going to Team Acropolis. And... Uh, what do you think about these sifts here, Khmer and Magyars versus Berber Slavs? Hmm, let me see. Hmm, I'm quickly Xing out the sifts. Lithuanians getting the Elb, Bulgarians. So Berber Slav, that feels like Berber might even go for Camel Archer, while Slav goes for Scouts Cavalier. And I would say... Khmer going for cavalry and Magyar's going for a heavy CA, but that would be pretty bad against Berbers then. Yeah, this is tricky, although we shouldn't overlook the fact that Magyar's technically have Ar uh, Arbalest. So, Arbalest should be doable for Magyar's. <laughs> this is so long. I don't think that Arbalest are the unit you want to go for if you don't have any bonuses for them. Uh, I don't like that either, but I don't think that Cav Archer is necessarily better against Camel Archers. So if you were up against something else, I would just be saying recurve bow Cav Archers. But against Berbers, as you said, it's problematic. Although Berbers need quite a lot of time to get to Camel Archers, which could be a window for Magyars. I am paused at 14 seconds, if you are ready. I'm still looking at the civilizations and scratching my head. I can load up the record game if you want to. And whew, this is this is interesting. Do you maybe have to play super aggressively with Magyars and Khmer? Because mm. you feel like a normal game is not an option? A long game? Maybe. Like, I can definitely see that being the case. Because, as you said, once Camel Archers are out, both Magyars and... Uh, Khmer struggle against that, and if you commit your Magyar's player to the Cav Archer play, that means that you will have uh, the Khmer player going Cavalry, and that means that it's only going to be Cavalier just like uh, Slavs, but I probably like Slavs a little bit more in that role compared to Khmer. Hmm... Oh, Khmer, elephants in the end are crazy good. I don't see how with your siege doing too much. Ah, this would be so interesting. I, I would have no idea how to play this properly. Uh, me neither, but, but I'm 1300, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> well, you still can go in with the game plan, right? I can. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, let's go. So, we will have AZCM as Magyars on the left side in red and Khmer for Say My Name in yellow. Other side, Berbers from Mr. Yo in blue and the Lix will be playing Slavs in green. So I think the biggest problem when you commit your Magyar's player to archers is that you cannot give up on the ability to go for the cheap and strong scouts, which on this map is quite disappointing because those scouts would be so, so handy on this map. Yeah. Can you go... It's, it's not... Double scouts is not an option, right? And what, what can Khmer go for? Are they maybe playing Fast Castle? I mean, it's, it's, it's possible. But I feel like the biggest problem with the Khmer FC is that if you FC here, your eco is going to be fairly weak. If nothing else, I could see, say my name, going for fast feudal and then just get horse color, bit axe, vol up and then boom up into castlage more than an FC. Hmm. 
Hmm. Uh, right now it just feels maybe Magia's just playing normal archers and Khmer going scouts. And Berber's going archers, transitioning into camera archers while Slavs are playing scouts. Are those our options? I think that there is a bit more flexibility for Yo. I can see Yo trying to go for a fast castle straight camel archers play because the biggest problem is getting your camel archer numbers up before you get overrun by CA potentially. So if you go for an FC cav archer or camel archer play, that could work out. Hmm. Also, the question is, can your teammate buy you enough time to get to those Camel Archer numbers? I'm not scared of Mass CA if Magias wanted to go for it. Camel Archers just feel like the better unit there. But also, if we think about Magia Heavy CA and Khmer Elephants, and let's say Cavaliers and Berbers going for Camel Archers, how much are you actually shooting at the heavy CA of the Magia player. Most of the time you have to shoot the front lines. Yeah, it's tricky. I feel like one thing to consider if we go into like that late game is maybe Slavic Scorpions because that would be good against the CA and also against the Elephants. Uh, I think that's a wishful thinking. I know my chat also said like, yeah, let's go Scorpions for Slav or Khmer. But it's such a bad unit on this map. You need mobility more than anything. Yeah, I feel like it's more about the unit for uh, like post imp when you start dropping stone walls. ACCM actually had some trouble with that boar because it stopped and he was like walking back without the boar. So the boar is going to be a little late for ACCM. Okay. Yeah, for say my name, some problems as well. I did have some thoughts if there could have been lag early on. Didn't really happen though. And Seminate seeing the wood line outside and sees that Yo already has five on wood. So he will have a good idea that Fast Castle is a likely option. Something that I think shouldn't be on this map. Look at that, Mr. Yo getting some extra balls now. That's a nice thing to do. It's a big risk involved, especially if you just let the villager walk back. Oh, Yo. Mm, I think it's not a big risk if you're Berbers. Uh, yeah, with Berbers, it's definitely not. And it's one of the reasons why uh, Berberus can be so cool on this map. You might even get that boar back without blocking it or getting gloom. Yep, yep. Should have only slightly less walking speed than the boar. Now, here's my question to you. If you go for an FC here, do you actually move out that wood line that's actually very, very exposed? Because that seems to be very risky to me. For Mr. Yo? I yes. don't understand it at all. Yeah. It because feels so weird to me. If I send one archer, you don't have wood income suddenly, and that's uh, pretty much going to cripple your fast castle, and he's got no chance to run back home for defense either. <laughs> it looks like we have a 22 pop feudal here from Say My Name with Loom, and he's sending free on gold. This looks like a fast castle from Say My Name here. Can he afford okay. it though? Warren berries. Is that not an archer play? This is just a normal archer play. The uh, archer range dropped by uh, the Khmer player. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's possible it's an archer play, but, but it would be so weird. If anything, you go for Magyar's archers because you can go up. You can at least get thumbring for your crossbows. Khmer archers will not even have any thumbring here, so. I am not necessarily a fan of Khmer being used as an archer sieve here, although it matches up better with Hunnic uh, scouts, and indeed, or Magyar scouts. It looks like we'll have the Khmer player using archers. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. This has to be very aggressive then, though, because lack of thumbring could hurt so badly. Yo is going to struggle finishing his voice here as ACM finds a will. And there's still a hole in the center. There is. Is you and Lix aware of that? Because Lix sees the hole. Maybe Yo thinks that Lix walled it off. That could be some miscommunication. Uh, there's even more holes. There's one that Yo should be responsible for at the left hand side. So there are at the moment three holes. And two of them are getting plucked. Not 
talking about the massive open area at the right hand side. Yeah, Yo sees that hole between those two woodlands on the left side, so it is very possible that he's going to vault off, but he kind of needs that because Magyar scouts are coming and there's a big difference between the scouts that do not have forging and the ones that do. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit surprised there. And I think ACM is over rushing his walls at the moment. I think a defensive mill and getting those deer could have been an option for him. Simply because he knows that Mr. Yo is still not in Feudal Age. Indeed, uh, Yo is adding villagers to stone, so indeed it's a straight camel archer play, but don't tell me that Yo... Like, Yo is not walling that one off, and I'm starting to believe that he doesn't think there is a hole there. And that could be a massive upset. Yeah, and this could be a massive disaster as well. Decider game... And now ACM will keep that hole open. There is a villager that's isolated from the others on the gold mine. That could be an easy pickoff. And Magyar scouts are no joke. Where the archers of say my name though. Only has three at all moving out now. Not the craziest early timing there. Did focus some on his economy as well. Maseo now going for more walls. Nice quick walls by him. Yeah, I, I like that there is one scout that keeps the hole open. Because now you realize there is a hole. But... The scout will keep it open for the archers, and the archers could also go for Mr. Yo's wood line. Let's not forget about that. Oh, but the archers are getting intercepted by two scouts. Lovely move by Lurks. Problems there. One archer will lose his life. Yeah, that is not ideal for Say My Name. He sent those out without a spearman, which is common with Khmer because you don't make a barracks. Oh, man. He already has to make a defensive tower. His castleage will be delayed here. And... Uh, I feel like even if Yo gets up to Castleage, this order did a lot of damage because Yo is going to be delayed very heavily towards dropping a castle. Thing is, did that hole even matter that that much? Lux was still open at the right hand side anyways. Yeah, it's tricky. I don't necessarily like the ACCM moved away from that hole because now Yo can plug it in and these scouts didn't do anything basically. They didn't kill a single vill and they could have kept that hole open for archers to break in. Uh, for, uh, forced Lux to stay at home for quite some time. Maybe otherwise more archers could have been intercepted. And six are now moving over. Defensive tower at the wood line by Mr. Yo. It feels like he could be stabilizing here. He could. He is definitely going to be delayed, but I feel like this should have done a lot more damage for Vietnam. Although we still have to add that there will be six archers hitting Yo's wood line, but there's tower now. So, as you said, I feel like. This is an opportunity lost for Vietnam here. Hmm. Feels a bit like it. Oh man. Defensive tower by Lux at his woodland as well. They are stabilizing. The big question is how long will it take till we get to Camel Archers? Yeah, because that castle isn't going to go up immediately, but here is Lix. With the scouts, and all those archers could go down very easily here, even though they have plus one, plus one. We see green sitting at no upgrades, and I don't think they're going down that easily now. Oh man, eight still alive here at the front, and blocking that stone, I think you need to build a defensive tower. Yeah, he needs it, and that is going to further delay his castle. He is still at just 360 stone, but he's going to be the first player up to castle age. Coming in with a market wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, will be tricky. Scouts can then focus on that market a bit. More archers are coming over. And there won't be any army for quite some time. Even forging for Lux here. He will stay in Fuel Age for a very long time. Double stable. Indeed. He needs to clean this one up. This game That's starts to remind me more and more to the GLC versus uh, Vietnam final game in the first set they played. It was kind of the same thing. It was Mayans, I think, for you mm -hmm. that got delayed into Castle Age and the castle drop. Well, I think I wasn't delayed, right? Uh, the thing is, um, we had then still massive army up and my plumed arch archer numbers were really low. And then, yeah, simply John, in this case, the Lux position was just crushed because the overall numbers were just so far behind. Yo actually bought the stone he needed for the castle, and this is where things could get interesting 
Although if you get to crossbows, I feel like the early camel archers will still struggle badly against crossbows. Yep. And our Khmer player is about to go up, but that's quite a lot of scouts from Lix and he wants to do one big sandwich here. Okay, we have both upgrades. We have bloodlines and that is the massive commitment that they needed potentially. Archer numbers will fall once spearmen coming over of ACCM. Was a bit on the later side and Lux will buy enough time to survive this. Yeah, this could be a deciding fight here. And uh, now that we look back, I feel like indeed ACCM's wasn't able to use that hole as good as he could have been. And now, we have Camel Archers for Yo, he's up to castle, safe. And uh, there will be two Castlech players from AC and Say My Name, but the mobility of those cav Camel Archers will be hard to match. Yeah, let's see about numbers though. 10 archers, not the craziest number there. Obviously, some interceptions. Uh, Mr. Yo is going for the TC. Pooh, that clear up was so important. And honestly, Lux not too shabby with his castle each time in behind this one. The power of slabs. It is the power of slabs indeed. We still have to account for Magyar Knights, though, already having the extra attack. And uh, that could be still troublesome for Lix to fight against because Lix is still two minutes away and just a couple of those Magyar Knights that bash through the walls could cause a lot of chaos. Okay, let's see how much they can do. I think this is the spot where Semenem could move out. Indeed, that's what he's doing. And pressure Lux at the side. Oh, could be tougher. And what? What? Lux is going for quadruple stable. Guys, <laughs> don't do this at home. <laughs> this this is like yeah slabs eco is sick but not that sick uh quadruple stable talk about flooding knights but uh, there is no way he keeps four stables and the tc working and even if he does his knights will have plus one plus one and the opponent's knights already have plus two so quality wise he won't have uh that good quality as compared to the opponent's knights Oh, quick watch, beautiful at the bottom there for say my name. Oh, are they? Scouts are in! Oh, oh, that is a disaster. Because say my name Zico isn't necessarily amazing. He will have the TC up because one will is walled in. But that's very good value for those scouts. And I feel like momentum is slowly coming in for uh, Yo and Lix. Although here come the crossbows and Lix will start losing control over that go stone mine now. And maybe even the stables could go down. Oy, oy, oy. And he don't tell me he's rushing out a new force stable. <laughs> this is this is ridiculous. He is able to produce on free, and he's got PC production as well. But obviously, the sustainability is always a question. Counter attack with camel archers from Yo could do quite a lot of damage because there is nothing that can help out against that one at home. But I feel like those stables would just go down so fast here for Lex. But he has enough backup stables. It's not that bad for him. I mean, th maybe this is why he built five. He knew that he's going to lose three. <laughs> oh, and then, he, yeah, when when he has the production, he can later produce out of two. Could make sense. Kamen Archers are now coming over. This is such a good game. Yeah, this is a worthy decider game here. And I still believe that Vietnam seems to have the momentum here because now Lix is running out of food. He has most of his farms blocked. So he's got four on food for three stables and the TC. Well, at least it's soon going to be just two TC or two stables. Uh, no more new red knights are streaming over though, right? Some of them idling in the center and it's only eight. One of them really low HP and now we see WWP jumping. Yeah, once again, they have the timing on there and there is no plus two defense on those knights from red, which means that they die easily to camel archers. And I think this is a way better fight for WWP because the crossbows aren't able to focus down the camel archers. Oh, holy moly. How did they make this hold happen? Oh, this is this is just crazy. And really, it, it would be a very, very sad defeat for Vietnam if they let this game slip out of their grasp. Because it is just some fights that are bad that they are taking. But overall, they're playing really good. It's just the timing is so good for WWP. Oh god, and now Semenem crossbows out on the map, not really 
delivering too much. Third archer range being dropped, and the counter attack should be lethal here, or maybe at least doing significant damage. Because Sam and Aim, he is not really that well protected. Indeed, and there is the mobility advantage of Yo and Lix here. They can just run away from any fight they don't like to take and uh, just chase down any crossbow group that they do want to destroy. And it is 29 army against 25, but the army quality is way better for White Wolf Palace here. Yeah, uh, as you can see, 3.7k to 2.1k army value there, and that's indeed the more important stat. Second castle being dropped, 3 CCs by Mr. Yo behind this, while Lux continues to play 1 TC. This is, this is a masterclass by WWP. Indeed, and uh, they seem to show their best performance when it matters the most. A castle comes in here for Yo, and there is still no answer from Vietnam to Camel Archers, which is the biggest problem for them. And they're opening themselves the back door. Camel Archers. Oh, all having all the upgrades, actually. Plus two, plus two, Bloodlines, Ballistics. Looking good for them. Slightly behind in eco upgrades, though. Indeed, and overall, the eco is way better for Vietnam. They have a 14 wheels lead. So this is still tricky for White Wolf Pass. They can't afford to lose this army here. Uh, that's wow. quite a lot of plus two, plus two knights. Uh, uh -huh. But oh, look at the right side. That's like five, six villagers going down from say my name while he's not looking. And uh, if not more, honestly, sitting under the TC there could be an option for them. At least forcing so much idle time. I think just keeping those two knights makes sense. Yeah, it, it, it does make sense. And a second TC coming in here for say my name. Thumb ring just now in for uh, Yo, and that is getting closer and closer to a scary group of camel archers. Mm -hmm. and how do you even engage against that one? And crossbows uh, having a tough time to chase. Same for sword knights even. Oh man. Yeah, this is very very hard. I feel like the only way you engage against those camel archers is if, is if you can somehow force engagements at the base of Yo and Lix, so they can just hit and run, but they have to fight. But that seems extremely hard right now. Still, it's an 11 villagers lead. And a 90 will count for uh, our red player here, who is going to get pushed by quite a lot of knights on the left. Mm -hmm, but sees it instantly, so can save most of his villagers, I assume. Knights are coming over for the defense. I think Lux won't find too much. Yeah, just running away. Nice reaction for sure. Now goes for TC number three himself. Quite, oh no, TC number four. Uh oh, Camarot is finding another raid at the right hand side. Indeed, they do. And there is more knights coming from Lix as well. They're just stretching out the defenses of Vietnam so, so well. This is the mobility factor. I think that the only shot I see for Vietnam is if uh, ACCM with the 100 VLC he has can go into Imp and try to get to Cavalier with plate barring because that might be enough against Camel Archers. Maybe, maybe that play. I don't see Khmer doing too much. Also, slinging it's something I could see, but I think you always die before that one. Maybe a wrap around here. No, Mr. Yo slips through. Indeed, he does. He loses a couple of camel archers, but he will answer with taking down a couple of knights here. And Yo is getting close to Imp. Wow. And once you get Bracer, those camel archers are untouchable in Castle 8. Yeah, it I, I feel like if Yo gets to Imp and he gets the Imp upgrades for his Camel Archers, this game is going to be nearly impossible to turn back for Vietnam. Well, some more night killed at the top happening, now on the way to Imperial Age. And as you can see with the lines at the very top, the VNA player is pretty far away from that for sure. 26 Camel Archers on the field. 50 crossbows, but will they find any real damage? I don't think so. Yeah, there is DCs protecting everything from Yo, and the Camel Archers are definitely finding damage on the left, and Lix's Knights on the right side also finding quite a lot of damage. Oh god, uh, over and over again. Yeah, I feel Ooh. like this is a bit of a desperation from ACCM. Only 13 Knights trying to take down a DC, but... Yo is gonna have at least a minute advantage into Imperial, and uh, this is getting very rough for Vietnam here in the decider game. Mm, 
Mr. Yo will lose that TC though. Cam archers are coming over. Can maybe do something with the hill advantage. Dux could maybe help. Oh, villagers actually. He's sending them to the left hand side. He lets them to uh, die. Uh, that is an interesting decision. I think he's just trying to help with the other camel archers. But this might allow ACCM to get a castle up here. And indeed, that's what's going to happen. But Lux, look at that. He will counter that left-hand side oh. defensive castle with a very aggressive castle at his side. Yeah, especially with uh, some knights being around there. Lord Doubt smiling upon us, maybe. Whoopsie, whoopsie. Yeah, that castle shouldn't really go up. Four knights should be enough unless we see Lux with some crazy quick walls of some of those villagers. Not enough army around. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Score so even. Villagers, can they be walled in? Looks like yes, they can. ACM not splitting enough. And now this is looking awful for Vietnam. Yo is going to have a castle on the left side as well. He can start making traps immediately. And this is the problem for Vietnam. That's imp for Mr. Yo and no one else is an Imperial right now. ACM looking at reasonable resources for it, but where's AC, uh, where's Say My Name's Eco? Like, um, I can see it now, but where is it in a minute? Uh, it's nowhere. It's going to disappear. And I would love to see Lix going for fletching here so he can increase the range of that castle. Oh, yeah. Like, Vietnam is yeah. not going to give up on this easily as ACCM will try to get to Cavalier or Paladin, but I feel like, like Lix's Eco isn't that bad either, so... Lix could potentially think about the Imperial Age in the next couple of minutes as well. Oh man, all the crossbows dying there as well. Still population lead for VNA here, but it just feels like the camera archers can't really be answered. And yeah, fletching would be a nice idea, and indeed that's coming in, as well as chemistry, elite camel archer. Yeah, that is where Myers will have just zero answers. Like, obviously, they can go for skirms, but the knights will just eat the skirms. So, in 2v2, that's not an option. And uh, I feel like ACM needs to keep this castle alive here, because that gold mine seems to be pretty crucial to him as well. Oh, man. Oh, oh knights are inside of Lix's wood line. And if there is a way back for Vietnam, that is through raiding... Uh, the WWP team here. Okay, yeah, well, I will allow that one. 40 population lead still. So, village otherwise, they are doing pretty well simply because Lux played so all in stylish earlier. And Camel Archer numbers. It, it's not like impossible, right? It's 29. We have 41 crossbow on the field. Maybe Arbalest can come out and then we have an engagement, but still. It just feels like Mr. Yo can always dictate the fights. Yeah, this is the civ advantage we talked about for Yo and Lix. And I mean, Arbalest will definitely help, but say my name hasn't even clicked up to Imperial. And Cavalier with Plate Bunny gets 28 Cavalier against 34 fully upgraded Camel Archers. Mm. Now we will find some villager kills quite easily. Can even con test Apple fight there, I would say. Just move in simply because he has the range advantage right now. Uh, it's tricky. I feel like oh, he doesn't. can, but he doesn't need to. Because he doesn't want to throw away those camel archers, because if he throws them away, suddenly the cavalier from ACCM could start dominating. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. Another aggressive cast on the center by Lux. Just so much map control. If you look at the mini map, it felt like 70 to 30% control. It is. It might be even 80 20. We have Imperial Age coming in here for Say My Name. So. That could be what can save the day for them if they have two Imperialage players against one. And now the Cavaliers will jump on the Camel Archers. Is this a good enough fight for Vietnam to hold out? Well, it seems like they will at least find some kills against the traps and delay a bit. But Cavalier numbers heavily, heavily decimated now. Yeah, they are looking very, very low, and the crossbow number is also decimated, so there is nothing to upgrade to arms now. Paladin on the way for ACCM, but he needs to preserve his cavalry numbers, because gold control is soon an issue for them, especially with Licks dropping castles on all gold mines. Oh, and those were so many crossbow losses as well. He wants to go for Arbalest, as you can see, he's still producing them. And it just feels like Mr. Yo got to his favorite 
game ever because he can dominate he had to hold some look spot him some time and from there on he could just play a dream of a game and now it's Maghrabi camels which means that those camels will start healing so if you don't fight them they will just regain all the health it's not like you can take a fight and then disengage against them anymore uh, the right side is collapsing for say my name as well he's at 64 villagers only now Oh, and another castle. That is so, so ugly. And yeah, now we're getting even wilder. Before that, you said 75, 25. Probably even higher than 75. Now, Cavaliers trying to make something happen. Will be calm Paladins any second, but look at that. Soon we'll have a buff 60 as the number for Elite Camarge. Yeah, just look, just, just look at the ACCM's northern wood line. I won't count the villagers, but I think that's like 30 villas dead there. Feels like it, oh man. Yeah, those three cam archers have been there for quite some time. Now blocking all the extra gold. Trade obviously not an option at all. While we see WWP starting their trade there and uh, can't even afford Arbalest. And Yo plays this one very smart. He knows that Say My Name is up to Imp, so he needs to fight this before Arbalest comes in and he will. Oh yeah, doesn't really need to, but yeah, he will take that one quite easily. Crosswa running away, still some seconds away from Arbalest, but we don't even get Bracer following this one or chasing this one down. Such a great game by Mr. Yo, and how did they hold this game? I think the lesser team easily falls to VNA there, but Yo and Lux, uh, we praised them a lot in the series. VNA with an incredible performance, but in the end, no cigar for them. Indeed. And I think Yo and Lix had their best game when it mattered the most. And in retrospective, we end up uh, everybody just winning their home map. And this is where we can go back to the Arabia game, where it was a so so easy win for Yo and Lix, if you remember. <laughs> Sorry, I have to look at the village of migration there in the center. Yeah, of the map. I, I was looking at that as well. I was like, <gasps> that's the only woodland say my name can access, and that's already telling the story of the set. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah, that Arabia game poof, was too easy and did cost them too much. Then they did did well, did win their home maps, but in the end, WWP will go into the semifinals. Indeed, and I feel like this is the difference between, let's say, a top 3 or top 4 team and a top 8 team, that they have some small details going better for them. Like, this game, it wasn't that super dominant in the first half, but after they managed to hold, they were able to counterattack. If you think back to the Team Islands game, once again, it wasn't any major differences. It was small things going better for WWP in terms of planning or execution. And that is what made a difference between these two teams. But I'm pleasantly surprised about Vietnam. I think I set 3-1 for WWP here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Also, we have to say we didn't expect Lux to go that wild with that strategy on Red Set Fortress. That is true as well. That, uh, that could have been a different game, indeed. But Vietnam still played really well, and they were close to upsetting White Wolf Palace here. But Johan Lix... Rally and so far, Yo and Lix were always close to losing sets, like against Swords, against Vietnam here, but they somehow still are able to edge out sets in the final games. Well, they have nerves out of steel for sure. Lux doesn't care at all. Mr. Yo is so calm in those situations and just closing out games. KD in the end, factor 3.3. That is a massive, massive advantage for Yo. This is just unit retention for Mr. Yo over there, and I think these 0.4 and 0.51 for the Vietnamese team tells the story. Like, even Lix had a positive KD. Yeah, but that's mainly due to villager kills, right? I would assume. Yeah, it has to be. Uh, he found so many against uh, Yellow there. Indeed. And the winner of this set will play against Suomi or Gamer Legion A. So, how do you feel about White Wolf Palace after this set? Do they have a chance to beat either Viper or Taro or Max or Viles? They lo they looked mighty strong, right? And uh, like after World Cup, uh, they they can beat everyone. 
All right, so you still think that they are actually very dangerous? I also think that, but I think they need to do some cleaning up on some of their strategies, especially strategies, because the execution is there, but like, as you said, the Cape of Storm strategy was awkward. The Regicide Fortress strategy was very awkward as well. Yep, agreed with both, but didn't like either of their approaches. All right. With that, White Wolf Palace moves into these semifinals.